on this final Friday of 2001. Final game for Washington and Texas, two teams that had bigger dreams a little while ago. And as with every bowl game, questions abound pregame. Significant ones here. Let's take Washington first. 34 days since their loss to Miami. How scarred are they? Are they that bad? Can they handle another team that has better physical talent in Texas? And as for the Longhorns, it's been 27 days since the disappointing loss. They were this close to being a couple hours north of here at Pasadena and the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T playing for the championship. They're not. They're here at the Holiday Bowl for the second straight year. Where's their momentum? How do they rally the troops? How will they respond? How is their running back, their star as well? For more on that down on the field, pregame check with Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc? Well, Mike, as kickoff approaches, if you're a Longhorn fan, you're wondering about their phenomenal true freshman running back, Cedric Benson, who was injured back on December 1st in the Big 12 championship game, bruised to the nerve in the right shoulder, causing a decreased range of motion and weakness. He had not practiced until four days ago, and in fact, had not had any contact until about four or five minutes ago. This is pregame warm-ups. This is Mad Dog Madden, the conditioning coach, hitting Benson on that right shoulder. Moments later, they gave Benson the football. Could he hang on? Yes, he did. That's the big question for Mac Brown and the Longhorns. Can Benson hold on to the football. Over on the Washington sideline, sophomore quarterback Cody Pickett injured his right shoulder. That's his throwing arm back in the middle of October. He is about 70% strength-wise. A big concern there. If they have to throw the football, will he be able to get uh, through the third and fourth quarter without any significant fatigue? So concerns on both sidelines for Washington and the Longhorns. Michael? Bevo is here and ready. So are we. Chris, see you in a bit for Verge Friday. So log on, tune in, and Let's kick it off in a few. <laughs> Tommy and Don and standing by. Don and I'm sure had an opinion on the end of the game clock management of uh, Mark yeah. Richt in Georgia. <laughs> now, Longhorn fans certainly taking interest earlier this afternoon in the game in Houston, the galleryfurniture.com bowl, as the rival Aggies tried to prolong a very long win streak against TCU, going back three decades here. The game in the Astrodome and K uh, printers for TCU. Casey just having a nightmarish afternoon, trying to pick on the freshman Byron Jones downfield, but off the carom, the youngster had zero career interceptions coming into this game. Picks off the first of three. 62 yards later, sets up the Aggie offense in the plus side of the field. Now, a &M would drive down inside the five, but on fourth down, they try to run it. And they get nothing as TCU stuffs them down there. Horn Frogs take over, still scoreless early second quarter. But on the next play, Jones again. His printers rolls out, throws the wobbly pass, and Byron Jones, the freshman, another pick. This time they do cash in. A Ferris quarterback sneak from the one makes it 7 0. Then Derek Farmer fumbles the ball, and Charlie Owens scoops it up for TCU. Well, watch him get out and get going here. Mark Ferris will have a shot at him, doesn't make it. This was the only way TCU could get back in the ball game. It shifted momentum, but Texas A&M answered right away, Chris. And they kept cashing in on TCU turnovers. A two touchdown lead when Printers just heaves the desperation ball, and the West Bodovich makes the interception, one of four against printers in the afternoon and then finally the dagger is Mickey Jones collects the Ferris pass over the middle shows the blazing speed and AM an insurance touchdown this is an Aggie team that had really struggled in recent years losing four straight bowl games RC Slocum gets the monkey off his back and then gets some cold ice water poured on his back TCU really stuffed by that wrecking crew defense only 118 total yards they force five turnovers TCU also has 11 penalties as the Horn Frog just not able to overcome all of those mistakes. All right, we're counting down out of Texas and Washington. Guys, kind of want to get your thoughts on this matchup here. We heard the report Cedric Benson will try to go, but how effective can he be with that pinched nerve up here? Well, I don't know that he can be that effective. Anytime you have a running back is that's running with a shoulder injury, it tends to make them less physical. I think Washington is going to be geared up to stop the run, even if Benson isn't in there. To Larry Triplett, their fine defensive tackle, will be concentrating on tying up two blockers and getting penetration. If he can do that, he'll be able to make Texas a one-dimensional offense, a pass passing team, which might help Washington greatly. Yeah, but with or without Cedric Benson, Texas has the advantage with athletes on both sides of the ball. Washington wants to keep this game close because Rick Neusheisel's players are better in close games than Texas. Oh, among the fans tuning in to watch this Culligan Holiday Bowl, the first fan, President Bush from Texas, happened to know he's a big Longhorn fan. Here's his plans for the evening. This afternoon, it gets dark here about 6, about 5.30, and so... Uh, Probably watch a little University of Texas football tonight. <laughs>
Mr. President. We also invite you to log on on yeah. Black Friday. Watch Major Applewhite return to the starter lineup. The Longhorns and the Huskies coming up next. thought about Nashville? I miss a place I've never been. My heart keeps going back again. I want to take a ride. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Welcome to Capital One's presentation of ESPN Bowl Week. Bowl Week, when victory is the common purpose between groups of young men. It's a matter of pride. It's a matter of glory. Down by six now, three seconds left. McMahon throwing for the end zone. Who has the ball? Touchdown, Brigham Young! Harrington quarterback draw. Harrington's going to go out Harrington, who has it for a touchdown! Texas vs. Washington. With a solid ground game and Roy Williams through the air, Major Applewhite has all the weapons in his first start all season. While Washington's Cody Pickett and go-to guy Reggie Williams will need to be perfect against the nation's number one defense. Will the Longhorn D spoil the Huskies' holiday? The Culligan Holiday Bowl, next. And we are live on a glorious night in San Diego for one of the annual highlights of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. It is the 24th Culligan Holiday Bowl. Second in the Pac-10, number 20 in the land, Washington. Number nine in the champions of the South in the Big 12, the Longhorns of Texas. Good evening, everyone. Mike Tirico, so glad you're with us here on the final Friday of 2001. 65 to 7 was the Washington story at number one Miami. Soured a successful season. So, what's going on for the Huskies tonight? Simple. Their motivation is redemption. As for Texas, one of those five superpower teams that had it in their hands, a chance to win the championship, play for it at least, in the Rose Bowl a couple hours north of here. They didn't get it done in the Big 12 championship game. They have the talent. The question is, what kind of passion are they going to play with tonight here in San Diego? I'm joined, as always, by Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet. And, guys, it is Major Applewhite, who didn't start a game all year, starting his final game of his career here this evening. Well, Mac Brown told us yesterday the reason that, that Major Applewhite will get to start in this game is the momentum that he created in the Big 12 championship game where he nearly brought back the Longhorns from a 19-point deficit. Major Applewhite has been here before. In fact, this will be his 30th career start. The thing I love about the guy is he's a competitor. He's 21-8 as a starter. You got to go back to 1999 where Major Applewhite was the Big 12 co-offensive player of the year. After all that he's been through, he still was able to deliver in that Big 12 championship game because he was mentally sound and positive after what he had been through. He'll be fine tonight as a starter, but Dr. Jerry Punch, I think the real question for the Longhorns will be the health of their premier running back, Cedric Benson. Exactly, Herbie. It was 27 days ago in the Big 12 championship game that Benson sustained a bruise and a stretch in the nerves in the right side of his neck and shoulder, producing a loss of range of motion and weakness in the right arm. The range of motion came back in about a week, but the weakness has not. It was not until four days ago that Cedric Benson practiced and he had not had any contact until about five minutes ago. In pregame warm-ups, Mac Brown decided to see if the young man had enough strength in his right hand and right arm to be able to take on a hit. So they had some warm-ups there, and here's how the doctors are going to check him. In the locker room, they had him hold a one-pound bottle of water out to the right side of his arm at 90 degrees for 30 seconds. If he can hold it up for 30 seconds, the strength is coming back. Until two days ago, he could not do that. Now he can. 
Now, Victor Ike will start, and the big question is how much of Cedric Benson will play? Well, it's still a game time decision. They're looking at him right now. Ike will be the starter. Benson may play, and Mike, that true freshman is certainly the catalyst for this Longhorn offense. Well, Doc, the same is true over on the Washington side. Coach, they've got the best true freshman receiver in the country and a guy named Reggie Williams. Well, you know, Reggie Williams is a superstar, and he's a freshman. He opened the season against Michigan, and all he did against the Big Blue was catch four passes for 134 yards. Now, he's six foot five, 215 pounds, and the key to this kid is watch him. Be careful, Texas, because the first time Washington gets in the red zone, I would not be surprised if old Reggie gets in the end zone and tries a jump ball over the corners from Texas. This guy is a super player and could be the difference in Washington winning this football game or not. He goes head-to-head -head against Quinton Jammer, yes, sir. maybe the best cover corner of the country. We got Roy Williams from Texas, Mike Williams on the Texas offensive front. They got Larry Dolan. Tony Dickett. Let's get it on. <laughs> we got great football tonight from San Diego, the 2001 Culligan Holiday Bowl. Also, log on your computer. Go online. We'll tell you why it's going to be a special night in San Diego as Bowl Week continues. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Culligan Holiday Bowl is brought to you by Bank of America, official sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team, and by New Edge Clean Shaving Gel. It helps lift dirt and oil every time you shave. ATA's Winter Wonder Sale. The affordable way to enjoy non-stop flights to your favorite destinations with no advance purchase or minimum stay requirements. Save even more when you book online at ATA.com. Better hurry, the sale ends January 14th, 2002. Want to fly for free? Go online to ATA.com to find out how you can earn a free ticket with our buy three, fly free offer. People across the nation are getting the message for great year-end values, amazing selection. Toyota Thon 02. Right now, consider the all-new redesigned Camry. It's better than ever before, which says a lot, given that Camry's been America's best-selling car the last four years. Hurry in now for all the value of Toyota Thon during the final days, because it all ends soon. Toyota Thon 02. Password value. another step forward in the eyes of Texas winning like they haven't seen in four decades the major is back in the saddle with his 44 school records and a high octane offense along with the nation's number one defense tonight the Longhorns look to stamp the season with a stampede Washington football has started out rather nicely with Rick Neuheisel at the helm. The Huskies have become college football's cardiac pack. Tonight they're underdogs again, but that's okay. It's just another Washington opportunity to prove that they belong with the nation's best. In one of the nation's best cities, we welcome you to San Diego, California, the 24th Culligan Holiday Bowl overcast, but weather won't be a factor. It never is when we're in San Diego. Well, you've been hearing all day, this is Verge Friday on ESPN, the convergence of TV and the Internet to enjoy tonight's game. See all the items. The headline, I think, is real-time coaching with real coaches, and they are joined here in San Diego by Steve Seifert. Steve? Mike, I'm privileged to be sitting next to two men with 67 years of college coaching experience. Jim Donnan and Dick Tomey have had unique ex access to the Husky and Longhorn staffs leading up to this game. And tonight they'll wear the ESPN.com head coaching hats and share that knowledge and their perspective online throughout the game. First, Coach Donnan, you're heading up the Huskies. What do you say in the pregame talk? Can't wait to play, Steve. This is a great night for football. We got to get that bad taste out of our mouth of that Miami game. Get the game to the fourth quarter. We're the best fourth quarter team in America. Coach Tomey, you're the uh, Longhorns boss. Do you script the first 15 plays, something like that? The Longhorns don't script plays, Steve, but the Longhorns do want to play this football game very badly coming off the Colorado game. The big thing I would say in the locker room is finish it because you have to finish it against this outstanding team from Washington. They played great in the fourth quarter. 
quarter, you have to double beat them. You have to finish every block, every tackle, every run, everything you do, and not get in a tight game in the fourth quarter with this Husky team. All right, fair enough. Well, he's talking about finishing, Mike. We're just getting started, so log on. All right, Stephen, we'll visit with you guys during the night. There's Mac Brown on the Texas side, four years in Austin, four bowl games, nine, 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 and ten for the win total. Other side, Rick Neuheisel, three years in Seattle, three bowl games. Holiday Bowl two years ago, won the Rose Bowl last year, back in San Diego again tonight. As we say, at this point, every year, every time you come to San Diego, you wonder, why don't we live here? <laughs> it's a great place, a terrific bowl setting. Texas will kick to Washington, and we're underway in the 2001 Holiday Bowl. Rock Alexander from the four. Down the seam. Still on his feet. Alexander brings it out to the 47 yard line. 43 yard return. It's an excellent set of special teams for the Huskies. He'll be let out by Cody Pickett, the sophomore quarterback, in his first year starting. He played the last half of the season with a separated right shoulder. He's tough but good. With him in the backfield. The offensive MVP of the year, senior Willie Hurst. Walker is mostly a blocker. Williams caught 55. He's the freshman. Elstrom, a senior, 35 catches. First game that Jeremy Stevens is really healthy, coming off the broken bone in his foot. Drive starts with the 47. Here is Hurst. Five to the Texans, 48. Wrestled down by Ahmad Brooks. The senior from Abilene, and right away, some attitude from both sides. Check the men blocking for Hurst. Kyle Ben, the guy in the middle, was the lone returning starter. Kept them together, first team, Pac-10. Everyone else demerged as the season went on. Here's Texas up front. Texas is number six in the nation to run defense. The key aggressive play up front, number 40, Corey Redding, the fifth leading tackler on the football team. 6'5", 260, out of Houston. Second and five. It is first again. We'll get only a yard. Active safety. Ahmad Brooks made the first tackle. Nathan Vasher, the strong safety, makes the second tackle. Here's the back seven for the Longhorns. D.D. Lewis in the middle. Three seniors back there, but Lewis makes his 51st and final start more than anybody in the history of UT football. Well, Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator, believes in attacking style. He'll play a lot of man coverage, and he'll overload the box because he has four defensive backs that are really four corners, including the two safeties. They can all run. Third and four, needing to get to the yellow line for the first down. In man coverage, they tried to get it to Williams, but Quinton Jammer was right over there with him. That's the matchup. Best covered corner in the country, best true freshman receiver in the country. That's the matchup to watch tonight. Reggie Williams is highly touted. He had a great rookie year in the Pac-10. And Quinton Jammer, he didn't have a lot of opportunities to make plays this year because the team's going away from him and going towards Roderick Babers. But tonight, I think Washington has confidence in Reggie Williams and they will test Quentin Jammer. Despite the good field position, no first down, and Derek McLaughlin, freshman, who had five punts blocked this year, will kick it away. Bounce out of bounds at the 14. Pick of 33, and Major Applewhite will have a long field to deal with. 44 career Texas records, 21 and 8 as a starter, and the final game in the burnt orange, he starts for the Longhorns. Victor Ike will get the start because of the injury to Cedric Benson, the 1,000-yard rushing freshman. The receivers are just terrific, all sophomores. Sloan Thomas, Roy Williams, B.J. Johnson, B.J. Johnson, but they all had key drops in this game last year. Both skates for tight end. Talent-wise, they're as good as any group in the country. They can, they can all really get up and down the field. Drive start at the 14. Apple White throw. Wait to Williams. 
seven to the 21 on Chris Massey, the sophomore from out here in California, Moreno Valley. I'll show you what's going on, battle in the trenches. The guys center and right, Anderson, Kirk Hughes, and Williams seniors. Williams likely a top 10 NFL draft pick in April. Randy Hart, the defensive line coach for Washington, told me before the game, this is the best offensive line they will have seen all year. And they've seen some good ones in the Pac-10. He says Larry Triplett, their all-star, needs to step up and make plays for him tonight. Pick up of eight, second and two. The give to Victor Wright. Squirms forward for the first down at the 27. Good second effort for the junior from Austin. His job until Cedric Benson emerged this year. There's motivation for Victor tonight. Here's the back eight for the Huskies. The linebacking core, but Dobby's a great story. Walk on has become a good tackler. Jamon Williams, they're strongest on the inside. The secondary number 12, Omari Lowe leads the Huskies defensive backs. He led Washington in tackles against Michigan. In fact, he had a 21-yard touchdown return for a touchdown against the Big Blue to help win that game. That's the unit that's got to get it done tonight. Ike is hot the first down run. Greg Carruthers up from his strong safety spot. Hit from Montana. Made the play. I want to say some. Randy Hart's a very fine defensive coach, but if he thinks the Texas offensive line is better than Miami, I think he needs another thinking. Well, because there's no way that Texas's offensive line can compare with the offensive line of Miami that we've seen, who scored 60 some against that Washington. Yeah, that's right. Last game they played, I think more than anything, he said that physically this is probably the most imposing oh, okay. offensive line okay. that they've seen. Matt Trissel, the fullback in motion. Apple White to Roy Williams. Had a block out there, but Omari Lowe made enough of a play to knock him to the ground. Third and long coming up. Here's Doc Punch on the sideline. And guys worked in the Longhorn bench and their doctors. Cedric Benson did indeed pass the water bottle test, holding the bottle up in the locker room, but they have determined he did not have enough strength to hold the football and take a lick. And therefore, the word is that Benson will not play. Again, Benson will not play. It is Victor Ike all the way tonight for the Longhorns. Well, if they get a first down or next drive, we'll talk about how yeah. that impacts this Texas offense. Whole different game without uh, number 32. This is third and 14, needing to get to the 38. Apple White dumps down to Brett Robbins. Tackle 35, Marquise Cooper, backup linebacker in there to get the sophomore running back, Robin. But he's short of the first down, and Texas will kick it away. Let's go, That's Brian Bradford, your college transfer. He's done a nice job kicking. Charles Frederick has a punt return for touchdown and averages 14.6 per return. the 39 yard line he returned at 11 yards after the punt of 45 Washington takes over in good field position when we come back to San Diego Remember house calls? Hey, Culligan Man. The Culligan Man still makes them, and they're on the house. Now your local Culligan Man will make a house call and do a no-cost, no-obligation analysis of the water in your home. He knows all about water softeners and whole house filters, bottled water service, and drinking water systems. And he's got a great introductory rental offer, just $3 a month for the first three months. To schedule your free in-home water analysis by an expert who knows about the water where you live, call 1-800-CULLIGAN or visit Culligan.com. At Bank of America, we really wanted to participate in the Olympic Winter Games. But in the end, we decided to support the real athletes and stick to the things we do best. Like making it easier to pay your bills with America's most popular online bank. Edge Gel is going to clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Edge Clean. Edge Clean's got a built-in facial cleanser that helps lift dirt and oil every time you lather. <laughs> to help lift dirt and oil every time you shave. Edge Clean Complete. So clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Ooh. 
Nice shot. Buffalo wings? A buck each. A buck a wing? Woo, how much for the whole buffalo? You know something better for a dollar? How about a 20-minute phone call? Really? Sure, dial 10, 10, 2, 20, and all calls up to 20 minutes, 99 cents. Seven cents a minute after 20. 10, 10, 2, 20 is cheap. Hey, the wings are on me. Hey, man, quit blocking the plate. Sorry, dude, this is my job. Hey, hey dial 10, 10, 2, 20. You practice hey, on man, me. man, you're big leaguing me now. Some of the Christmas scene in Old Town, San Diego. A little Feliz Navidad. Texas here for the second consecutive year. Washington for the second time in three years. As the players said, hey, if you have to come back to a place, why not San Diego? They do a great job the atmosphere. John Reed just was the executive director for like 400 years. He just <laughs> 21. Fin yeah, 21. He just finally retired and he did a great job. In fact, in 1979, I was fortunate enough to bring an Indiana team here to play against BYU. Great bowl trip. And a great bowl game. One of the better bowl games of all time. First and 10 for Cody Pickett. The sophomore is in some trouble. He takes off, takes a hit as he gets out to the 43-yard line. That right shoulder is something we have to watch at all times tonight. Derek Johnson, also a true freshman, number two on this team in tackles. Doesn't start, but you know he's in the game. Makes quite an impact. Derek Johnson uh, was the Big 12 defensive freshman player of the year, and he doesn't even start the game. It's 6'4", 215 from Waco, Texas. He is a superstar in the making. Future great one for Texas, and oh, yeah. really finally gives them a physical inside linebacker, really a gifted man. Didi Lewis is a great player, but Derek Johnson is He's physically talented. Two tight ends, one back, and they will throw it towards Williams, who caught it on Quentin Jammer. That's a first down at the 48-yard line. The pass is pretty, one pretty physical Williams. here, and that's the way it's going to be between these two because it's going to be one-on-one -on -one all night. Very little safety support behind Quentin Jammer. Find out who's going to be the guy that's going to make the plays here. A lot of shoving, a lot of pushing back and forth. And Reggie Williams showing Quentin Jammer that he's not going to back down from the senior. He makes a nice catch there and picks up the first down. Cody Pickett was the reason why that play was complete because he threw the ball where Jammer could not get to it. That's why it was a big from the 48 first. Just a couple to the 46-yard line. Not on my time, says Marcus Tubbs, the sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. Cody Pickett lost 15 pounds from the beginning of the year. Early in the year, he had an injury. We've talked about it already tonight. Since then, he hasn't been able to lift weights. He can't even do push-ups. So he's lost a lot of weight. He's lost some velocity on his throws. And they are careful with him. This is an offense that typically they like to run the ball. They like to mix in the veer option. They have not been able to do that this year, even though he's probably faster than Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. Or so he says, right? <laughs> Here is Pickett tossing complete to Todd Elstrom. The senior takes it out to the 25-yard line. That's a pickup of 21 and a first down for the Huskies. Cody Pickett this time sets up in the pocket really nice. You get good protection. And the reason why this play is good, Kirk, watch him lean forward and follow through. That was a perfect rhythm pass that got there. Kirk, I like this kid set up. He's quicker than I thought oh, he's, in the film. He's yeah. a really quick set up. Yeah, he's very quick. I, I think he's one of the more talented young quarterbacks yeah. you'll see in all the college football. Only a sophomore. It's his first year starting. His arm strength yeah. is probably his greatest strength. We're talking about his athleticism but they committed to him and his throwing ability this uh, this year and they've been had they've uh, had some great results from the 25 from Enzo for Wilbur Hooks incomplete you know, I just absolutely love Rick Neuheisel's game plan and, and his and offensive coordinator, Keith Gilberson. You know who exactly they're going for in big plays? They're going for the All-American, Quentin Jammer. That's one of the theories that I always used to like. You always attack an opponent at its strength. Because Why? if you could beat him at the strength, you demoralize him. So if you could beat Quentin Jammer, then you demoralize the Texas team. And that Rick Neuheisel is a brilliant offensive coach for Keith Gilberson. That's the theory they're using, going after the strength, the beaten strength, to moralize the Texas defense. Second and ten. Elstrom in motion. They throw again. A lot of throws here. Take it. Incomplete for Jeremy Stevens. The huge tight end. 6'7", 260. 
We'll come back to Cody Pickett for a second. Caldwell, Idaho, sophomore, and to replace Marcus Tuiasa Silva. And he came in this year and set some significant school records. And we talk about sophomore passing yards. You think of the guys that have been there. Conklin, Cornell, Holbrook. Go back to the Sunny Six Killer, of course. Quarterback history. Washington's had greats. I didn't mention the best of all of them in Warren Moon. When well, you set passing records at this school, <laughs> you're good. He's also tough. He's played with injury and pain all year long and been able to hang in there and come up with some great, uh, great games. Third and ten. First option not open. First down in the backfield. He couldn't get turned around. Now he had beaten D.D. Lewis. <laughs> New highs will know this team might have six instead of trying for three. The whole thing is going to be whether or not they're going to be able to protect Cody Pickett because Washington has the athletic ability at running back and wide receiver and tight end to beat the man coverage that Texas will apply. So if they can protect Pickett tonight, they're going to have opportunities to score points. John Anderson, second team all lead, a field goal attempt at 43 yards, powerful leg, sometimes inaccurate, better from between the hash marks. I think, folks. Is in Mexico. I wasn't even close. Good drive. No points. Texas ball when you come back to San Diego. Cars from Chrysler. Exhilarating performance. Incredible engineering. And of course, eye-catching designs. I don't believe in luck. I work hard. I take control. So when I decided to quit smoking, I chose Nicorette. Nicorette helps me take charge. Helps prevent cravings by setting a regular schedule. Eight pieces a day. Ten. Seven. And if a sudden craving appears, I take action with another piece. And now, thanks to me and Nicorette, I'm finally gonna win. And luck has nothing to do with it. You can do it. Nicorette can help. With a bunch of friends in our racing limo to test the power of interstate batteries. So come on, check it out. Anyone for a power shake? We've got them. Hey, this baby's cranking out some power. Look, we're on. We're doing pretty good. Interstate batteries, power fast, built to last. Hey, Bobby, we just won first, second, third place. Oh! Monday, Brandon Doman and BYU stare down Louisville. BYU Louisville, the Axa Liberty Bowl, 4 o'clock Monday on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Culligan Holiday Bowl is presented by Culligan. For a no-cost, no-obligation in-home water analysis, contact your local Culligan man at Culligan.com. And in part by Chrysler. Pride equals love. 24th year of the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Fourth year, it's the Pac-10 against the Big 12. Been here for all four and seen some terrific matchups. Nebraska, Arizona, Washington, Kansas State. Last year, Texas and Oregon, 35-30 shootout. Chris Sims started for the Longhorns that game. Major Apple White tonight. Victor Wright, who had a kickoff return for touchdown in that game. Gains just a couple of yards on first down. If you're just joining us, Cedric Benson, the 1,053-yard true freshman, will not play because of the stinger in his shoulder. Now, what does that do, guys, to the Texas offensive game plan? Well, let me tell you what I think it does. First of all, we saw Oklahoma, Texas without Benson, and Texas did not score a touchdown because they had no offensive balance. I think that's really going to hurt Texas tonight to not have him, Benson, running the football, Kirk. Second and eight. From the 27. One back in run high school at the first down as he put his head down and ran right over Alexander. And we're going to see how, as this game progresses, Lee, that 
I, I think Oklahoma had a lot to do with Texas not being able to run that that day, whether Benson was in there or Ike or Ivan Williams. I think Victor Ike gives you speed in the backfield. I think it changes the game plan without Benson in there. I think now they rely more on their passing ability, the short passing game of Major Applewhite. They're going to have to try to throw. Before, they relied on Benson to establish the run, make the safeties commit down, and then have one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside. Unless Victor Ike can get it going early tonight, they're going to have to start throwing more. From the 36 out of the three wide set, you'll see a lot from the long hole. Applewhite's throw to B.J. Thompson. Out to the 40. 23 first down yards for the sophomore from Grand Prairie. It's an opportunity here on first and 10. Texas early in this game has shown a tendency to run the football, so Washington is starting to come up to the line. Safeties are coming in and, and really trying to take that away. There's some openings there. That was a good call. Straight drop back. Nice job by Major Applewhite. Talk about rhythm and, and getting back there. That time, I think Major Applewhite showed that's his strength, getting back and getting rid of the football. This first and ten play. A senior from Baton Rouge gives to Ike. A couple of yards. Larry Triplett's helmet came off in the tackle pile. Marcus Roberson was in there as well. Triplett, first team all packed in senior out of LA, closing out his college career tonight. He'll play on Sundays. Will Major Applewhite play on Sundays? Uh, probably not as a star, maybe as a backup quarterback in the long run, but the moxie of a Major Applewhite and the intangibles that he brings has so defined his Texas career. 44 school records. Second down, eight to go. That'd be pretty nice. And that's going his entire senior season without starting a game until tonight. Second and eight. Deflected at the line of scrimmage. Ben Madavi. The pass thing I think that is very, very important for people to appreciate about Major Applewhite is imagine being the co-Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year as a sophomore, only to lose your job for the next two years, battle through some injuries, for them to call on you your senior year, the last game of the year in the Big 12 Championship game, and for you to mentally be in the right frame of mind to stay positive enough through all that time to come through and deliver. That says a lot about his character. They bring Brett Robbins down at the bottom of the screen. Five receivers in the pattern. Applewhite throws underneath an incomplete for Roy Williams. And, you know, the one question I had, and Major knows these guys very well, but he hasn't started to play game tempo with them all year. Is there going to be a timing issue as this game gets going between QB and receiver? Well, I think because a lot of these receivers he's worked with in the past and in game situations, not so much this year, but in the past last year. So you might see that early in the game, but I think as the game goes on and they get a better feel for what Washington's doing on defense, I think they'll get, uh, they'll get in sync. Ryan Bradford tries to pooch it down there. Fair caught by Willie Hurst at the 10. On field for Washington with this drive. After the 31-yard kick, to remind you what goes on in the Lone Star State tomorrow. Capital One Bowl League continues with Cliff Kingsbury and Ricky Williams of Texas Tech. The Red Raiders will take on Khalil Hill and the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Sylvania Alamo Bowl presented by Siemens. Texas Tech, Iowa, 3.30 Eastern, tomorrow on ESPN. Good games this afternoon, Capital One Bowl League. The defensive struggle that A&M dominated, and then Boston College beating Georgia before us. First down run for the backup running back, Rich Alexis, who had nearly 400 yards this year. The sophomore takes it out to the 13. Tough to run inside against this Texas defense. A lot of people thought last year when they lost Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers, it could be a, a dip. And Marcus Stubbs and Maurice Gordon on the inside have done a really good job. And as Lee mentioned earlier, Derek Johnson's emergence as a true freshman, along with Dee Lewis in the middle. It's tough to run up the middle against the Longhorn. Second eight, pass. First options covered. Pickett pumps and goes and gets out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Number three, Cody Pickett. Third and about a yard. He actually could have picked up the first down, as you saw by the yellow line. It's heck of a lot easier to make that judgment with the line in there and when you don't have a 200-pounder chasing you as well. 
Well, Rick Neuheisel's team had to invent some things offensively. They were so good running the ball, replaced four out of five starters on the offensive line, and had 100 fewer yards per game this year. I think that that number is interesting because the thing that made them commit to the let's throw go, was go. the injury to Cody Pickett. This this offense last year, you think about how many times you saw the option from Tuiasa Sopo. They may not have run it that much this year with Pickett, but they would have lot, run it a lot more if he were healthy. Pickett had trouble with that snap, and Alexis got popped. D.D. Lewis was able to make the hit up top as the surge came with Everett Rawls. And Nathan Vasher. And Marcus Tubbs, number 95, 6'4, 295 pounds from DeSoto, Texas, was the guy that penetrated and caused the line of scrimmage to move back. That's why they stopped that play cold. And another punt for Washington with McLaughlin to kick. And another talented kick return man, Nathan Vasher, who just makes things happen when he touches the ball. High kick, fair caught, 39-yarder, and we'll add five with a bubble violation from our Mountain West officiating crew. Well, they knew the Thursday night crew was coming, so they brought the Mountain West guys for the game tonight. <laughs> it's a good crew. Ken Rivera is the referee. As you've seen all day and all during Capital One Bowl Week, neutral conferences in bowl games. Violet Herman, two yards old, kicking team. Five-yard penalty, first down. So Texas will have it in good field position, just shy of midfield when Major Applewhite in the Longhorn offense comes back. Now when you order any pot from our exclusive Wolfgang Puck Bistro set, you'll get a full belly. Absolutely free. The Wolfgang Puck Bistro Collection, only on Home Shopping Network. Now with every purchase of our exclusive NFL Helmet Grill, you'll get a rush of adrenaline. Yes! Yes! Absolutely free. The NFL Shop, Mondays at 8 p.m., only on Home Shopping Network. Cold, snowy Chicago weather is hard to avoid, but don't take a vacation to get warm. Take a trip to Military and Police Supply. Stock your Foot Locker now with long underwear, gloves, Arctic mittens, toasty socks, winter hats, wool sweaters, pea coats, flight and field jackets, combat boots, wool winter clothing from Military and Police Supply will keep you warm all season. It's in the bag. Located at 7351 West Madison and Forest Park, minutes from the Eisenhower. From the city or suburbs, dial 312 surplus for weekly specials and closeouts Military and Police Supply. Shuttle service has been suspended. You have to get here on your own. Most wonderful week of the year. Capital One Bowl Week continues Saturday. At noon, Toledo battles Cincinnati. At 3.30, Texas Tech looks to stop Iowa. And at 5.30, K-State tries to put a hurt on the Cukes. Cincinnati Toledo, the Motor City Bowl at noon on ESPN. Iowa, Texas Tech, the Sylvania Alamo Bowl presented by Siemens at 3.30 on ESPN. Syracuse, Kansas State, the Insight.com Bowl at 5.30 on ESPN2. Capital One Bowl Week, Saturday. Coach, what do we say pregame about these guys? Oh, uh, that's a band. That's right a good-looking band. That's a good-looking huh? band, boy. <laughs> and you can't help it but stand up and put the horn sign when he plays the eyes of Texas. It just it, it, it takes over. Orlando, it takes over Columbus, body. Detroit, Ann Arbor, you anyway. stand up. It comes into your heart and soul. Scoreless Welcome. here with 331 in the first quarter. On Verge Friday, part of our bowl coverage, complete interaction, convergence of television and the internet tonight. If you logged on at ESPN.com, enjoy the welcome of Jim Donnan and Dick Tomey as they real time play head coach for these two teams. Apple White protected the ball, got in the hands of Roy Williams. To the 39, first down. Interesting. Interesting, interesting call. Roy Williams, number four, six five two ten. Listen to this. He's run six reverses in his career for an average of 21.5 and two touchdowns. If you don't have a good running back and Cedric Benson's gone, give it to the wideout to run. That's a tremendous call right there by Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. Get the ball in the hands of Roy Williams, and he can score. <laughs> First and 10 from the 38. A 
another reverse. This is Tony Jeffrey. He spins to the 23-yard line. Pulled down by Zach Tuiasosopo, but they pick up 13 and 15 in the same play. The reason you see it's not surprised they went to it a second time, but the reason they went to it the first time is Washington's defense is so aggressive here in the early going, and they're flying to the football. But the coaches upstairs obviously saw that and they went downstairs because they said, hey, let's let's try to come back with the reverse. The second time, you would think that Washington would be a little bit more prepared and slow down and be ready, but another big game. The reason why those plays work is because they have extra time in a bowl week to practice them. Victor Wright. Larry Triplett, first team all conference, and you see why right there. He beat the block and made it a no game play. Well, with the health of Jerome Stevens, they get him back. They're able to move him, not to get too technical over here, but they're able to move him to the defensive tackle, which moves now Larry Triplett over to the nose guard position. And Randy Harper believes at the next level, that's where Larry Triplett will be successful. He has to play nose guard as opposed to playing the three technique. He makes more plays and gets better penetration inside there. After no game, second and ten. There he is again. Oh, man. Two in a row. This is, this is basically what Larry Triplett is known for, power and speed. And he, he's able to fight off the block there. And once he's able to get through Kirk Hughes' block, you can see that he has incredible hand strength to bring down the ball carrier. But his quickness at 300 pounds is why people are talking about him being one of the better defensive tackles in the country. Well, single-handedly, he's just shut down the Texas run game back-to-back -back plays. Third and 11, needing to get to the 13. to Sloan Thomas. Good job by Chris Massey. He's gone after him a couple times tonight. He's hung in there. It's shy of the first down. And a field goal attempt coming for Texas. You know, you can always tell guys that end up in, in their careers, you go back and you look and you find out what did they play in high school? You know what Larry Triplett played in high school? Tailback. He's about 235, 240 pounds. He played running back. And, and whenever you have an athletic player who ends up moving down and putting on some weight, they never lose the athleticism, and that's why he's such a good player. Walk-on kicker, Dusty Mangum from 35. Missed it. <laughs> Two missed field goals and no score in the first quarter. So Mangum, a walk-on kicker for Texas who created his own website to get colleges interested in him. I don't think he'll uh, list the picture of that field goal there. Speaking of online, we are online with our coverage of the game tonight on this uh, first Friday, including pick the best Texas player of all time. Earl Campbell, Ricky Williams. Pretty good uh, options. That's just a couple of the options. You can go log on to ESPN.com and take part in our poll via Enhanced TV. Best players in Texas football history. It's D10 from the 20, Alexis. With a couple of yards to the 22 yard line. Tommy Novus, the great linebacker, who went on to a terrific NFL career. He's one of the other players who's on that selection panel for Texas, best all-time players. So we have best in the history of their school, or two of the best quarterbacks in the history of their schools. Drew Brees on the left, Doug Flutie on the right. Doug wearing that Boston College hat proud after the Eagles win today. Of course, they are the quarterbacks for the San Diego Chargers. Pickett, the Washington quarterback, throws to Todd Elstro. The first down at the 33 yard line. We're talking about great quarterbacks. Bobby Lane from Texas is the other person on the choice list at Enhanced TV. Lane, Novus, Williams, Campbell is part of the great tradition of Texas football. Fourth all time in wins among Division I programs. Only Michigan, Notre Dame, and Nebraska have one more football game. 
First down for the Huskies from their own 35. The fullback Ken Walker says hello to Nathan Vasher. Big stick strong safety from Texarkana ends the first quarter with a three yard pickup. Each team ran 16 plays. Each team missed a field goal. And after one, the rare scoreless opening quarter at the Holiday Bowl. Sunday NFL Countdown, Sunday mornings at 11 Eastern, only on ESPN. How many 4x4s can you really take off road? I suppose we better go give these guys a hand, huh? With its patented four-wheel drive system, Jeep Liberty makes every day Independence Day. No laughing this time, guys. If you buy one DVD... December 7th, 1941. By Pearl Harbor. The movie critics hail as a DVD you must own. Pearl Harbor. Own it today on DVD. Rolaids announces unbeatable taste. Five great ways to spell fast relief. And now taste tests show even Tums can't beat Rolaids. In mint or fruit flavors, what a great tasting way to spell relief. Rolaids. The bow. Resistance becomes strength. It becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire jam in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. It was our first house, and shortly before my parents' grand inspection, there was a tiny problem. I told my State Farm agent I had to get it fixed fast. When you choose State Farm's Premier Service Claims Program, there's no calling around for estimates. You just go straight to a participating contractor, and they'll guarantee their work. So this is it? It's just that simple. Why well, they don't build them like this anymore. And no. Premier Service, just one more way. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. One Culligan Holiday Bowl. Third time this year, Washington was scoreless in the first quarter. Fourth time for, uh, for uh, Texas, the Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Missouri game. We start the second with Washington, second and seven. Three receivers in the pattern. Pick it hit, but he found the tight end, Jeremy Stevens. Pulls forward to the 45. Elon Brooks is giving away nearly a foot, nearly 80 pounds. We, sit, we, we knew the health of Jeremy Stevens would be interesting in the way it affected Texas's defense. Tyrone Jones is big now. He's 6'4", but he doesn't quite have the athleticism here. He goes down to stay with Stevens. Stevens is not only 6'7", 260 pounds, but he has incredible athleticism, and he's the healthiest he's been all year long. I think when he's healthy, he could be the best tight end in the country. Texas defensive end, Kalen Thornton, shake it up, came out on that play. Maurice Gordon fired in there. Looks like we'll see first and five coming up. Player to the snap. Offside. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still. First down. Here's Jerry. 
And guys, all week long, the, the Washington players have talked about how they played with a lack of intensity at Miami, how much they, they didn't have toughness and went to Miami, and the embarrassing 58-point margin of defeat, and how what a bad taste left in their mouth. They have come out in the first quarter of this game thinking about that one, and the intensity is back for the Huskies. Gary getting a sense of that over on the Husky sideline. First and five, the rare fullback run, but it's Willie Hurst in that first back spot. And he has his first down. Washington's fullbacks carried only 20 times this year, but they used that wrinkle effectively going back and watching some of their game tape from this season with Hurst lining up, dotting the eye. Doc makes an interesting point. You can actually see Washington gaining confidence as this game is going on. Anytime you get beat the way they did in their last game, you want to get back onto the field, but in the back of your mind, you're also thinking about that defeat. As they continue to play this game and have more success, they're becoming more and more confident. That was the triple option there for Pickett on the veer and a good read for a pickup. From the 34, they're in Texas territory again. And going for Williams. Incomplete. The pass is incomplete. Jammer the jammed him. And Williams was able to get a step as the route continues. Again, Rick Neuheisel using that theory I talked about earlier in the game, attacking the superstar of the other football team to demoralize the football team. Quentin Jammer is by far the best cover man in America, so why not go after him with Reggie Williams and see what you can get? If you do beat him, then you beat the best player to demoralize a football team. I think that's wonderful strategy on Rick Neuheisel. Shows confidence in his young receiver as well going after him. Drop off the press coverage. Little screen for Alexis. He got jostled at the line. Did a terrific job of staying on his feet. Got out to the 28-yard line. Third and four coming up after a pickup of six. Anytime you're going to throw a screen, it's about the timing. Here, Pickett does a good job of setting it up and then selling it. And then after that, it's it's just a matter of Alexis getting and setting up the blocks. Watch how he kind of sets this first block up here. Once he had a kick out by Zajac, he was able to pick up a few more yards and give him a better chance to just first down here on third and four. Tackled by Jermaine Anderson. He's in for Kalen Thornton. Washington looking for its first third down conversion. Here's option with Pickett, who gets rocked. Tyrone Jones tied him up for everybody else to get there and uh, have a shot at that right shoulder. And Derek Johnson, number 11, 6'4", 260. He played the option perfectly, made the quarterback keep the ball, and then watch, he comes from the inside out, and poof! Boy, does he stick him. That kid's going to be a sensational football player. Keep your eyes on number 11, Derek Johnson, the rest of the night. The rest of his career. That, that, oh. that's, uh, I think he's player. the best true freshman defensive player in the nation this year. We saw him play a handful of times, Coach, and he is absolutely amazing. Anderson missed horribly his first time. From 43, snap wasn't good. Good job by the holder. And Anderson connects. Skursky did a nice job bailing out the bad snap. And Anderson's 43 yarder, the first points of the night. Washington, Texas, nothing. The head coaches continue to battle wins. Let's see what our head coaches think. Over to Steve Seifert. Hey, Mike, it's been fun watching the brain trust to work here. They are working their jobs tonight. Guys, what have you learned about your opponents that you're going to try to exploit down the road? Well, I. Go ahead, Jim. I think uh, Texas is doing a good job defending Washington, but Washington caught him off guard a little bit with the two backs in the backfield and can, can hurt him with the option and working on their backers. Well, I think I think as far as Texas is concerned, they have a lot of offense available. The reverse and the run have given the pass good pass protection time, and Major seems to be dishing the ball off the second receiver really effectively. They have a lot of offense available right now. All right, fair enough. Guys are taking stands and calling plays ahead of time to follow the fun. All you have to do is log on and click the enhanced TV logo on ESPN.com. That's all you have to do to follow this fun. All it's right, Steve. Cool. It is. It's kind of neat. And there's also some options as well uh, for folks at home to relive the history of these schools. Mel Kuyper also has a breakdown of pro prospects for some of the people. Well, there's plenty of that in this game. <laughs> Not only for this year, but for the years to come. Absolutely. 
There's three Williams in this game who may be first round top 10 picks over the next uh, two, three years. Mike Williams, the lineman from Texas. Roy and Reggie, the receivers for the Longhorns and Huskies, respectively. Booming kickoff. Through the end zone and a touchback. Good job by John Anderson. We've been telling you about our uh, Verge Friday. It was with the ESPN.com site. Looks like if you uh, click on Texas the million dollar question who should be the Texas starting quarterback, Major Apple Whiter, Chris Sims. You can be part of those polls and watch some real time stats on the bottom as well as the coaches call plays along the way. Well, it is Apple White starting in his uh, final game. And he's been okay so far, considering he hasn't started a game all year. See if the offense can continue that passing that Tommy was talking about. They split out right. and Applewhite looks for the tight end. It's intercepted. Bo Scape got a hand on it, but on the deflection, Ben Madabi comes up with the pickoff. Mike, there's the timing that you were talking about earlier in this game. He threw behind Scape here. He had him open if he makes an accurate throw, but by throwing behind him, Scape did a good job just to come back and get a hand on the ball, and in doing so, he put it up in the air for Madavi to make the interception. You know, in 1999, when Major Applewhite was playing all the time, he threw 156 times without an interception. That's a school record. You can tell he hasn't played a lot this year. That ball was not a well-thrown football. Good pressure coming in also to rush the timing from Jerome does with it. Staten's in motion. Take it to throw. Paul Williams incomplete. I need to bring up one stat. It was very important. Colorado scored 24 points after Texas turnovers in the first half. And that's why they bombed Texas. Texas is not stood up to the plate when the other team has played very, very well and got a turnover. So it's very important psychologically here for the Texas defense to hold them to three after the turnover. This is the fourth time Washington's in Texas territory. You don't get down here very often. You have to start coming away with some points. So. Although Washington has momentum, I think this is an important drop. Take it back to the air with time. That was almost intercepted. Ahmad Brooks almost had the pick. Washington has struggled in the red zone all year long. I think it's because they a little bit more one-dimensional this year, relying on Pickett throwing the football. Go back to last year and Marcus Tuliasasopo on the option attack and the play action. It was very difficult to stop him in the red zone this year because they don't have that running game. It's a little bit more predictable with the play calling down inside there. Williams, bottom of the screen, matched up with Rod Bakers here in Vancouver. Not Jeff. They get in trouble. That's incomplete. It went off of Wilbur Hooks, who lined up down here against Baber. And knocked away. That, to me, was a perfect example of Babers, Brooks, Basher, and Jammer. Four corners playing in the defensive secondary because they tried to isolate the two inside people, Brooks and Basher, with receivers, and they ran right with them. Boy, that was awful nice coverage on the defensive backs part against the Washington receivers. Four corners playing in those four secondary people. You said that in the pregame show. And that was a perfect example. To, of play, to play his style of defense, yeah. as much man coverage as he likes to play, you have to have guys who can run. Anderson, who made his last one from 43. From 43 again. After as ugly a field goal as you can have, John Anderson's come up with two. They turned the turnover into three, and Rick Neuheisel's team leads by six. Hey, buddy. Hey, Cloggy Man. You Where's hear it puppies? at 743 Hickory oh, Street. Puppies. They all are. You hear it above the din. Hey, Cloggy Man. You hear it among the quiet. Culligan. It's the sound of Culligan water being delivered to your door. 
For a free in-home water analysis and a great offer, call 1-800-CULLIGAN or visit Culligan.com today. Top here for 1-800-CALL-ATT. You don't have to be a great athlete like me to make it to the NBA All-Star Weekend. Because the more times you use 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls, the more chances you have to enter and win a trip for two to the 2002 NBA All-Star Weekend. Eight winners will be paired up with eight NBA three-point shootout contestants. If your NBA partner wins the shootout, you win $50,000. It's easy. Just dial down the center with 1-800-CALL-ATT. Nice shorts, carriage strap. Is that trash talk, huh? Try Capital One's No Hassle Card. Plus, get the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates and no telemarketing. What's in your wallet? 6-0 Washington, our aerial pictures, courtesy of the Goodyear Blip Eagle, based in Carson, California. Goodyear currently operates five airships around the world, three here in the States. The spirit of Europe and the spirit of the Americas in South America. Luis Navarro, our cameraman tonight. Washington 6 0 back to back 43 yard field goals. John Anderson a booming kickoff last time that resulted in a touchback. Same thing here. Irvis Hill just lets it bounce. College football as soon as it hits the end zone, it's a touchback. Well, Major Applewhite hit his first four passes. Since then, has not had the same success, including the interception that led to the last field goal. The thing about Major, though, Mike, he'll come right back in there and make that, make that next throw. He's able, because of his experience, to shake off the mistake that he just had. Victor Ike looking for room to run, getting it out to the 26-yard line. Certainly a little bit of a run game will help him out. He'll mark it back at the 25. Jerome Stevens with the tackle. Of course, Applewhite gets the start after Chris Sims comes to the bench. You know, people forget how good a season Chris Sims had. He broke Major Applewhite's record for single-season touchdowns. Everyone wants to remember immediately the two games, the Oklahoma yes. game and the Colorado game. They forget the other 10 where... Sims was good enough to be second or in some cases third team all conference. Victor Ike is stuck. What the push from Stevens up front really having an impact. Ty Ellis made the tackle, but it's Stevens and Triple. There's such a surge up there from Washington. And you go back to the Sims situation. Remember, though, the Texas fans were concerned that Sims could not win the big game. He lost last year's Oregon game here. Turnovers. He lost Oklahoma game. Turnovers. He lost the Colorado game. Turnovers. That's their gauge winning big football games. They're not those games that they can win with anybody. You tell me he lost that game last year in this building for turnovers, and I said baloney. Well, he had four turnovers. 36. Underneath escape the tight end. He's going to come up short of the first down, though. Had to get to the 30. And he's a yard shot. We'll have to kick it away. The other thing he did, Mike, is he was able to win 10 games only the second time since 1983. And uh, you think about the history of Texas football, you kind of think about the great history, but the recent history has not been as dominating as they would like. But Chris Sims need to, needs to keep his, uh, his chin up because next year could be a great year for the Horns with him under center. Brian Bradford's kick. Is fair caught by the backpedaling freshman Charles Frederick at the 24-yard line. 
Let's look ahead to our Capital One Bowl Week lineup. And the NFL as well. ABC's Monday Night Football is on Saturday night this week. The Baltimore Raisin Ravens visit Keyshawn Johnson and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We get it going with Monday Night Countdown presented by UPS. 7.30 Eastern. Brian Cox is going to join us in the studio. What do you mean us? I will be back in Connecticut. You're doing that? No On way. the way down to no uh, New Orleans to the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. Come on. No, it's no way. Direct, it's a direct route. San Diego, Red Eye to Bristol and down to New Orleans. They must have cloned you. There's got to be more than one Mike Tirico. I would to it. It'll be a great trip tonight. Perfect. That's tomorrow night. Here's Pickett on first down. Elstrom on the run to the 37 yard line. It's a pickup of 13 on the play. You know, it's funny is every quarterback has that one guy who's like a security blanket. We met with Cody Pickett. We were talking to him. I said, okay, forget about all the speed that Washington has now. Who's the guy that when it's third down and you need to make a throw, who are you looking up? He, and he started to smile and he said, Todd Elstrom. Todd Elstrom runs the exact same route. He's at the same place every time. I know where to count on him. And he's the guy that I look up when I need to make a completion. After his third catch, Hurst for a couple. What a athletic play by Derek Johnson to make the tackle. You saw the hometown for uh, Elstrom throughout in Washington. Of course, uh, that's where the Hewards were. Bobby Howe, secondary coach, working with the DBs. So I mentioned the Hewards. Mike Hewards, the head coach there. Brock and Damon, the uh, quarterbacks. Of course, Billy Joe Holbert went to the same high school in Washington that's turned out so many successful players. The rodeo kick from Idaho. Pick it. Three step drop to Elstrom again. The 41 yard line. So he's going to leave them with 35 after the Roderick Babers tackle. I mentioned Cody Pickett, the cowboy from the rodeo background. Uh, he's dabbled in rodeo a little bit. He will never be as successful as his dad. retired as one of the great rodeo performers of all time. Third and four. Deflected and incomplete. Tried to set up a little short pass, but Jermaine Anderson, seeing a lot of time because of the Caitlin Thornton injury, made the play. And for the sixth time in six tries, Texas stops Washington on third down. When it becomes third down, the Texas defense, the defensive line and the linebackers, their ears get pinned back, and they're coming after Cody Pickett. When you have the kind of secondary that Texas has, you can afford to do that. It puts a lot of pressure on not only on Pickett, but the uh, the offensive line of the Washington Huskies as well. Derek McLaughlin, the freshman to kick. Texas might come after this one. Here they come. Derek McLaughlin, good kick. For the 15, that's going to be flagged for the bubble violation. And that's why that rule lacks common sense. You tell me how it was humanly possible for Wilbur Hooks to slow down and stay out of the two yard bubble. Understand you're protecting the players. The intent is right. But common sense, you tell me, how's this guy stop? It's a terrible call, terrible rule. Well, the reason why that play is in there, gentlemen, is because of the safety of the receiver. Right. We had so many players hurt that they had to do no, something. No, we appreciate that. Right? I anybody, so I want to make sure yeah. you guys understand yeah, that that's understand. it because the players flagrantly hit the guys while he was watching the play. And it was for safety of the players. That's why the rule is in there.
If you're taking aspirin for your heart, there's important news about mixing medication you need to discuss with your doctor. It's been shown that ibuprofen, the pain reliever in Advil and Motrin, in some cases may interfere with the way aspirin works to protect your heart. Don't let another pain reliever interfere with aspirin's life-saving benefits. To relieve tough pain, take extra strength Bayer Aspirin. Nothing's proven stronger and more aspirin won't interfere. Bayer, take it for pain, take it for life. Aspirin is not appropriate for everyone, so be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. Okay, good news. That broadband thing we all want? Got it figured out. Honey, you call the phone company. Tracy, you're digging the trench. Shovel's in the garage. I'm going up on the roof to assess satellite possibilities. Timmy, check out the schematics. Appreciate it. Let's go! Broadband! We know how you feel, and that's why Circuit City offers one-stop high-speed internet access. You can find what's available where, compare options, and arrange installation. Circuit City, we're with you. Yeah, we can get broadband at Circuit City. Uh, oh. ABC's New Year's celebration continues when Florida battles ACC champ Maryland, the FedEx Orange Bowl, Wednesday night at 8, 5 Pacific on ABC. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Culligan Holiday Bowl is presented by Culligan. For a no-cost, no-obligation in-home water analysis, contact your local Culligan man at Culligan.com in part by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Who said it doesn't feel like the holidays in winter in Southern California? Horton Plaza, some skating going on on this final Friday of 2001. See if Texas offense can kind of get in rhythm a little bit. They have not been the last few drives. Limited to 100 yards and five first downs. Here in the first 21 and a half minutes. Applewatt with five in the pattern. Trussell the fullback. The 31 heavy hit there. Right at the first down mark. And Matt took the worst of that. Sixth catch of the year. Texas offense slowed right now, and a lot of a lot of focus on Cedric Benson and whether or not Texas, with him down, would be able to run the football effectively with Victor Ike. And I don't know if they've given him enough of a chance. I think with Benson down, you still have to realize that Washington's defense, if there's anything that's hurt this defense this year, it's teams that can run the ball. They're dead last in the Pac-10 in rush defense. So I, I know that they've, they've uh, Texas has made the adjustment and they're throwing the ball, but I think they're they're getting away from the run game a little bit too early. What a play! That's why they Owen run it. They can't even get to the line of scrimmage because yeah. of the pressure. They've got so many guys, Kirk, on the line of scrimmage and just coming forward. Wow! Owen Biddle made that play. He is Rudy. He was a high school running back, 1,576 yard performer, an All State player wasn't recruited by any Pac-10 school he sent tapes out to coaches sent eight tapes to the University of Washington coaches finally got a chance and as a walk on he's earned a scholarship and made some kind of play there third in the yard first down and much more to the 46 yard line so they go Ivan Williams to stretch it out first carry tonight for Williams I think they have to win the battle up front. They're losing the battle not only the safeties and everybody flying down into the line of scrimmage to take away the run, but we've been talking about Larry Triplett and Jerome Stevens a lot tonight because of the way they're winning the battle up front against the, the centers and the guards of the Texas offensive line. But I still think they should run a little bit more tonight. See what happens. And they got the big physical back in there, Williams. Went three starts this year and a couple of hundred plus yard performances. Johnson, a reserve who played in 10 games this year. Oh, no! 
He had a grand total of four tackles all season. <laughs> He's a leading scorer in the game so far. Tied. <laughs> Extra point try for Anderson. Wow. Last year, Texas fell behind 14-0 to Oregon in the first quarter. This year, it's 13-0 after the 38-yard interception return by the sophomore from Tempe, Arizona. Well, Terry Johnson's going to work against the All-American Mike Williams. Watch him sense the throw. Major Applewhite has dumped the ball so much in this football game that the defensive linemen now are starting to smell out the underneath throw. And one of the most important things, the question comes out now, is what do you do with Chris Sims? Now I'm saying right now on the sideline that Matt Brown and his offensive staff have got to make a decision in the second half. If Major Applewhite does not need that, they've got 124 yards total offense and no points. I think that they have to go to Chris Sims in the second half here to get Chris Sims ready to play for next year, plus to win this football game. Now I know Major Applewhite came back and beat Colorado, but he's not playing like Major Applewhite did against Colorado. That's my opinion. Right now, you got to look at Chris Sims eventually. It is the no-win quandary that has been Texas football for the last two and a half years. What do, you, what do you do? You play Applewhite here because you pulled Sims and he gave you the best chance to win. Hey, you know, let Applewhite get the reward, quote-unquote, close out his season. But then if you go back to Sims, well, you should have done that to start with in the game, Matt. You can hear half right now out there in the state of Texas. You can hear half the fans say, stick with Major, and the other half say, go with Chris Sims. You're crazy. You're right. It's a no-win situation. I did that internet thing. You know what I call them? What do you call it's that? Chat. It's a chat. I had 17 questions. 14 of them were about Sims and Applewhite. Sure. Tell it. Applewhite said it best this week. Yeah. He said, you know, two and a half years, 365 days a year, three times a day. I don't eat. I'm asked. But what about the, what about Chris? Yeah. Do you and Chris get along? What about the quarterback deal? Should you be start? It's just been a question for two and a half years. Two supremely talented, classy kids who've handled this extraordinarily well as people. They've become friends through all of this. But it's football that people are concerned with here tonight. See if Applewhite responds. It's still the second quarter. There's a throw to escape the tight end. Up to midfield, 31st down yards. The pass is On to be Davis. The free safety made the tackle. Pass caught by Chris Sims roommate. Oscape has the athletic ability to get up the field vertically. 6'3, 245 pounds out of Denver, Colorado. And here with safety split down the hash, it's a great throw by Major Applewhite to lead Scape right down the middle of the field and right over the top of the cover there by the linebacker. The reason why that play was open, Kirk, is both the free safety and the strong safety are playing cover two, sure. and they split out wide tight end up the middle. Good call by Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. White timing throw for Sloan Thomas. Incomplete. Well, on this uh, Verge Friday, we're polling uh, as part of the ESPN.com site. Should Texas pull Major Applewhite? We were talking about, Kirk, this instant poll. Over 7,000 people immediately respond and say no to this point. And yeah, you have to, I agree with them. 6-16 left first half. Plenty of time. Score a touchdown on this drive. Ease into the game. Part of the problem has been the guys getting jerked in and out of the game. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want the quarterback looking over his shoulder after he makes a mistake. Applewhite is 8 of 13 with two interceptions here tonight. To Brett Robin in the nick of time. That is one of my all-time favorites. That play was invented by a guy named Cats Cactus Jack Curtis at Utah with Lee Gross Cup. It used to be called a shovel pass. What happens is he comes back, Utah pass. Everybody comes at him, he pitches it underhand, and it's not like a draw play, only a flip forward. Key point there, if he drops the football, it's an incomplete pass. I was going to say, you scared me. I thought you were going to forget the cover. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. Lee Gross Cup made that play famous for Cactus Jack Curtis, Utah, a thousand years ago. AARP stuff there for you. Breaking it down. Man. Third and three. Applewhite looking for the home run. B.J. Jetson.
33 yard touchdown pass. For Johnson, it's his fifth on the season. Dusty Mangum adds the extra point, and Texas is back within six. But now it feels like a holiday bowl. Now it's the holiday bowl. <laughs> DJ Johnson in one on one coverage on the outside against Chris Massey. The ball throw right over the shoulder. Outstanding concentration by the wide receiver, B.J. Johnson. And you can see Major Applewhite saying, guys, way, way too early in this game. We got a long way to go. AT&T Broadband deeply regrets any inconvenience caused by the recent and sudden interruption of our cable internet service. We're proud to say, however, that our engineers and technicians worked around the clock to quickly launch AT&T Broadband's new state-of-the-art advanced network. As a new day is dawned, AT&T Broadband is committed to providing the Chicagoland community with reliable, high-quality service through AT&T Broadband Internet, a service that is, in fact, now better than ever. Now get 0% APR financing on used cars. That's right, 0% APR on used cars, all makes, all models. Choose from more than 300 vehicles and get 0% APR. Plus, make no payments until 2002. Local lenders have agreed to allow Jerry Gleason Chevrolet to offer 0% APR for a limited time. Your business is important to us. We have an entire staff dedicated to your needs. Come to Jerry Gleason Chevrolet, Roosevelt and Des Plaines Avenue in Forest Park. On Sunday NFL Countdown, the playoff crunch is on. And special guest coach Bill Parcells is back to help break it all down. Cordell Stewart, the Steelers QB, has emerged as a leader who could take his team to the Super Bowl. Cordell really impressed me. Plus, the 49ers' Garrison Hurst and his amazing comeback story. This 49er team is better than they were because Garrison Hurst is better. Get all your NFL news and pregame analysis first with Sunday NFL Countdown, beginning 11 a.m. Sunday on ESPN. Twenty fourth Culligan Holiday Bowl at Qualcomm Stadium here in San Diego. Eleven of the prior twenty three have been decided by five or less. So the underdog Washington jumped out to the early lead, and the Longhorn fans finally let loose a little bit as they're on the board with B.J. Johnson's touchdown catch. His sixth career catch of 40 plus yards, five of the six have been for touchdown. Dan Smith on the hunt. A short kick taken by Charles Frederick. He found a lot of traffic and is brought down at the 27 yard line. Applewhite, three of four for all 80 yards on that touchdown drive. Charles Frederick. 43 yarder by Johnson to close it out. It was the seventh Longhorn possession of the night. Applewhite talks with Chris Simpson. Chance Mock, who is the third string quarterback. Let's see what Cody Pickett and the Washington offense will do. They have yet to score a touchdown tonight. The option look has uh, been snuffed out pretty quickly when it's been the fullback at the top of the eye. Ken Walker, the senior from Honolulu, stopped by D.D. Lewis. Early in the game, Washington was attacking Quentin Jammer and trying to get the ball downfield to their big, tall, wide receiver, Reggie Williams. We have not seen them go to that for uh, the last probably two or three possessions. Huskies have run it 12 times and gained just 32 yards on the ground. This is the toughest defense to move it on in the country. Pick it, pump and go, safety help, and it's intercepted by Nathan Basher. He was going for Todd Elstrom. The ball is intercepted. And the Longhorns have it near midfield. By number three, Nathan Basher. Nathan Basher is just a supreme athlete. We've been talking all night about the Texas secondary, how you have four cornerbacks playing Nathan back receiver. there. And in fact, One Nathan Basher game. next Todd year sitting Elstrom. back in safety, waiting to make the catch. Next year will be moved to corner and replace Quentin Griffin. These guys take a lot of pride back there, and the leader is number five, Ahmad Brooks. Seven interceptions on the season for the uh, likable Vasher. 
whose nickname is ESPN3. He watches ESPN constantly. Watch out for a home run ball shot here from Texas. Applewhite the quick hit to Roy Williams. Madami takes him out to number four. at midfield. Line number four. Line the big fellow up there at tight end to get him one-on-one -on -one with Madavi at linebacker. Madavi's a tough guy. Defensive MVP is a walk-on, too. I told you Biddle, the walk-on, who earned a scholarship at the start of this year. Last year, that very first meeting of the season. Here are the rules. Here's the tone. Rick Neuheisel comes in. Congratulations, Ben Madavi. You have a scholarship. That was the start of 2000. He ended 2001 as the team's defensive MVP. Second and six, pressure on Applewhite. There's the home run shot. Incomplete. Johnson and Massey got tied up there a little bit. And Applewhite had to get that one out of his hands quickly. One of the world's most enduring symbols. The Goodyear Blimp Eagle providing these aerial pictures tonight in San Diego. Goodyear Blimps travel over 100,000 miles every year covering major events. I hope it's not leased at 100,000 miles a year. A severe penalty to pay. surprised with the way Washington's getting so much pressure on Major Applewhite nearly every time he drops back to throw with their with their defensive front. This is third and six for Williams. Got away, got a block. Stop shy of the first down. <laughs> 45. Greg Carruthers oh. with a big hit. I mean, talk about a big hit. Greg Carruthers right there makes the play that keeps him from getting the first down and leading on to the touchdown. Carruthers is 6 to 190 from Helena to Montana. Boy, that was a great play. Now, the key point here, does Texas go for it if it's fourth down and short yard? First, uh, they're going to measure. And I believe by the spot, they are foot short. Maybe slightly less. Mac, uh, Mac Brown ran the punting team out, and then when they found out they were going to check to see how close this is with the sticks, they pulled them back, and now they look like they may decide to go for it. I would go for it, and I'd run the ball right over number 63, Mike Williams, the right tackle. The reason I would go for it is because I think if you can get a first down here and keep momentum, you'll get at least three points and get something back and make it like 13 to 10, if nothing else. I would go for it right here because my defense is playing very, very well. They're pumping them up in that huddle, so they're gonna give it a shot. Basically, when it's fourth down and one, they've done enough study and knowing the personnel or nails. But when in doubt, you give the ball over the right tackle number 63, and I would give it to that Ivan Williams, who's about 235 pounds at number 26 inches for the ball game. That's what I would do. What about the old quarterback sneak AARP style? This kid's not big enough for the AARP okay. quarterback. Right. He's like a feather going against it. I would give it over the right tackle. Williams first. Left tackle. Good call. Robbie Doan, who shut down North Carolina's Julius Peppers. And their regular season matchup. Texas picks up a fourth down. So they'll keep the drive alive here at the 344 mark first half that Ivan Williams is 6'1 235 pound sophomore from Cleveland Texas he got some body movement off the line of scrimmage that kid's a nice looking football player I'm glad he's got I would rather have him in there in this tough game than Ike because I think he creates more push forward seems like the last time we saw him was in Dallas against Oklahoma huh. with Williams. Actually, good coverage also. Make the safe and smart one. Texas is going for win 11 tonight. Matt Brown sat in the room with us the other day, and I asked him, how do you scrape these guys off the ground after Colorado? Because your championship dream was right there. And he said, good question. And we sat down as a staff and said, guys, you can get win 11. That has only happened four times in school history. Lean on the pride. Build the foundation. Take it to the next level. Finish in the top ten for the first time since 1983. That's what Texas goal is here tonight. You can say it, but you have 
to buy into it as well. Williams came back, made a great play, but Omari Lowe was all over him. And a gain of less than a yard. We'll send you to the studio. Chris Fowler, what do you have for us at halftime? Well, Mike, one of the five teams from Texas involved in a bowl game successful this afternoon. Music City was turnover city for the Georgia Bulldogs. And our Verge Friday question, the best Washington Husky of all time, Steve Bettman. That'll be the question at halftime as Rod Gilmore and Terry Bowden join us. Thank you, Dr. Verge. We'll see you uh, at the half of this Verge Friday. The guys in the studio. Third and ten, needing to get to the 32 to keep the drive alive. Corner pressure, perhaps, from Alexander. Here comes number three in white. In that same spot goes Roy Williams. First down to the 35. about it every week a side adjust from the quarterback and the receiver once the blitz comes you're going to see the receiver make the adjustment here and, and this is the thing that is very very difficult for his safety to come up and make the tackle right here davis has to make that tackle when you're a defense coordinator and you bring the corner and rely on that side adjust you're hoping that the safety will make the tackle short of the first down and force the field goal and that time he could not bring down Roy Williams short of the sticks. Juan Demi Davis didn't make the play first in 10 Texas from the 25. Applewhite pumps right goes left. Touchdown Williams! Great adjustment! <laughs> the legend adds to it. Even at 13, and the extra point could put Texas ahead. Mangum adds it to the Longhorns have scored back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. Before he played a game in Austin, they called Roy Williams the legend. For two years, he's been adding to it. Seven touchdowns this year. First one in this game. Two touchdown passes, back-to-back -back drives for Apple White. Remember house calls? Hey, Culligan Man. The Culligan Man still makes them, and they're on the house. Now your local Culligan Man will make a house call and do a no-cost, no-obligation analysis of the water in your home. He knows all about water softeners and whole house filters, bottled water service, and drinking water systems. And he's got a great introductory rental offer, just $3 a month for the first three months. To schedule your free in-home water analysis by an expert who knows about the water where you live, call 1-800-CULLIGAN or visit Culligan.com. New America Online version 7.0 is here. There's never been a better time to join. Call now for our best offer ever. 7.0 is filtered with a whole bunch of new stuff. Bing. You got your instant messages. It's fun getting email. You've got mail. Call now, sign up over the phone, and be online in minutes. Customer service is great. 7.0 makes it even easier. Call 1-877-265-0200 now to join AOL and get a risk-free special offer for new members. What are you waiting for? America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Restaurants, nice feel to that downtown area. Outstanding. You like that, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a couple of good dinners I, down there. I had to kind of ease into it there. <laughs> First night. A little Mexican, a little Italian. But we apped up, right? Oh, appetizers. We're big appetizer group. It's the key to the meal. If you invite us to dinner, go appetizers heavy. Heavy, heavy on the apps. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them to the middle of the table, split them up. Well, it's just I like this, uh, this offense for a major Apple White Orchestra. There are so many options. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. 
Works out just fine. Last two drives have been excellent. 14 13 they lead. Charles Tricker. And well covered on these shorter kickoffs by Texas thus far. It's interesting when we were going that chat with Dick Tomey, he mentioned that. He said that as the Texas coach, he felt like he still had a lot of options, particularly the wideouts. That was a good call on Dick's point. Let's check in with Jerry Punch while we have a second. And guys, our pleasure to visit with the president and CEO of Culligan, the title sponsor of this bowl game, Mike Reardon. And Mike, I gotta ask you, what has your involvement in this game done for your company? Well, Dr. Jerry, it's been great to help us grow the revenues of the Culligan business, particularly in our bottled water business and our home drinking water systems. But more importantly, it's helped us to improve our brand awareness to a more youthful audience around the world. I gotta ask, we'll, we'll go back upstairs and come back down in just a moment. Mike, all right, Doc, first down, pick it. Finds some space and throws to Stevens. Complete tight end for oh, about six yards. Go ahead, Jerry. And Mike, for those who may be looking to get involved in advertising, why choose collegiate athletics? I mean, obviously you came here four years ago. It's the fourth year being involved with this bowl. Why come to college football? Well, first thing, the guys out there drink a lot of our product, water. But more importantly, the youth of America today is interested in hydrating themselves and in drinking good water. And the Culligan man can provide that. So we think it's the future of the business. Culligan's been around for 65 years, and I think this is a, a great way to expand our market. Well, you've been the Culligan man here in San Diego for four years, so thanks for your involvement in the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Well, thank you very much, and thank you to ESPN. There goes Reggie Williams across midfield and to the 46. First down, minute 39 remaining here in the first half. On the tackle, number six, Quinton Chandler. Inside move here by, by Williams, and this is something that he's had an opportunity here in the first half. One-on-one -on -one opportunities against Quentin Jammer. He's won some battles. He's lost some battles. That time, wide open, and a nice throw by Cody Pickett. 22 yards there. And a full complement of timeouts. Pickett's pass is caught by Patrick Reddick. Ball came out. Looks like Reddick got it right back. The senior from Newberry Park, California, did just that at the 27-yard line. Give Cody Pickett time oh. to throw. He's a dangerous man back there. Good back, coaches. Good back, coaches. Say the biggest difference with this Washington offense this year is they can get the ball downfield vertically. They haven't had that since Rick Neuheisel has been in Seattle. Pick it. Over the middle, Stevens tight end first down at the 15-yard line. They took a shot from Stevie Lee. And going to stop the clock here at 114. Good looking clock drive, huh? Seventy-four seconds before Chris Fowler and company join us with the uh, Dodge College Game Day halftime report. The Aggies and the Frogs. Our early game today, the Sylvania Alamo Bowl, and they'll get into the conversation of the best all-time Longhorns. The online poll. You can participate in as well. Dodge College Game Day halftime report in the studio, and then Chris will be headed out to Pasadena to join you guys. You head right. up. Uh, for Rose Bowl coverage, and college game day on New Year's morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> four o'clock meeting. Oh, is it 4 a.m. Yeah, meeting? It's, it's yeah, we have to. Yeah, we'll three call them. 3 a.m. wake up. We'll call them. Okay. Uh, there'll be six or seven people there with us watching the show. No, nah, they'll be out there. They'll come right over for the parade. All the parade folks will be over there. In have you been to the Rose Parade in Pasadena before? I haven't been. You haven't, have you been? No, we've seen the build-up, though, and the, the excitement of the community. I think they really get excited about the parade, maybe even more so than the game. The parade is big. The parade is special. It'll be different this year. The parade and then no game right after yeah. the parade with the national championship game, the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T a couple of days after. Good drive here by Washington, the Rose Bowl champions on New Year's Day 2001. Pick it. Deflected. Stevens is angry that... He was knocked down. Sixty-nine seconds, two timeouts. Texas has been down here before, down in the red zone, or Washington, rather. That's right. This is the fifth time they've yeah. been down in Texas territory, and have only come away offensively with six points. That's right. 
The touchdown came on the interception. Kick it complete to Williams. Jammer swings him out of bounds. So they continue to wind the clock. At the 59 second mark. I guess they they said forward progress there. So Washington will use it second time. Out. Make sure as a team called timeout or out of bounds. There's a little bit of confusion here. Because there is no team oh. called timeout. I saw one official winding the clock. Third and three. Gordon is saying Washington induced him to come off side. Maurice Gordon jumped when Cody Pickett I, I moved agree. his left leg to move the man in motion. I agree with you, Kirk. I think it's going to be on Texas offside. Down here, it'll be half the distance to the goal, and that should be enough for a first down. Ball is at the eight and a half. Taking it to the uh, four and a quarter. Get you past the first down stick at the five. Play to the stand. Offside. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. The yard is result. First down. On third downs, defensive linemen typically dig in and get ready. And you can see right when Cody Pickett moved his left leg to send Reggie Williams in motion. Maurice Gordon jumped the gun, came across the line. This is where number 14, Jeremy Stevens, at 6'7", 260, the Washington tight end. Kirk's been talking about him all day. But this is in the end zone area, red zone, where he can be tremendous because he can out-jump people. If I was Washington, I'd try to get the ball to him. Yep, I think I'd give him an option route. <laughs> if he has one-on-one -on -one coverage, give him an option to take the defender to the inside or to the outside and put the ball in an area where only he can make the catch. That's the guy right there. His 2000 was the best tight end season in Washington history. 43 catches, 600 yards, but broke his foot on the second play of the second game this year, the Idaho game. And uh, did play towards the end of the season, but just was not himself. Is he coming out, or is he going to stay in? You know, as no... He did not tell us. Yes, that's the only thing... He, he, go ahead, Mike. He please. told me that yeah. his decision was kind of altered slightly because of the injury. Yeah. Everybody has assumed he's coming out. He's right. not 100% sure, and I said... Now that you're healthy, if you have a big game here tonight, does that mean it'll hasten your decision? You're more likely to go. He said, no, it won't be based on one night. <clears throat> Excuse me. It'll be based on, is it right for me? Part of him wants to come back and finish strong at Washington. They're going to be a great team next year. <laughs> he's without question. Oh, he's a major leaguer. One of the most gifted tight ends in the country. And he's, this is, he said, he's by far just the healthiest he's been all year. He feels good. First and goal, they have three tight ends in the game. Wester in motion. They might throw to one of them. Kick it. Touchdown! Joel Collier. First touchdown for the senior from Spokane. This is a perfect illustration of Jeremy Stevens, number 14, being the decoy, and number 97, Joe Collier, also 6'7", 260, <laughs> coming around in a bootleg. Jeremy Stevens, by going out into the area, drew the defensive man with him, and that's why Collier was wide open for the touchdown. Five-point difference, but very early in the game, so Neuheisel goes for one. With John Anderson's kick, it is 20 to 14. That was the first career touchdown for the senior Joe Collier. Stevens gets all the pub, and when he was injured, Collier started five games. He had one catch in his first three years, seven this year, and he gets his first career touchdown in his final game as a collegiate performer. Boy, that was a sensational drive by Cody Pickett and the offensive coordinator Keith Gilberson. Pickett, six for seven, 72 yards and a touchdown on that drive. You know, Keith Gilberson is a legend in, Pac, in the Pac-10 area as being an offensive coordinator and a great football coach. 
He's the last Cal coach to win a bowl game. In 1993, when he's the head coach at Cal, Keith Gilbertson beat Iowa 37-3 in the Alamo Bowl. And right there, that man is credited with being probably Back one of the smartest the offensive coordinators in all of the Pacific Coast region. Former head coach at Cal. Gilby's done a great job. Uh, offensive coordinator of that 91 team, the yep. number one scoring team in Washington history, the team that won the national championship, shared it with Miami. The high point of Husky football. This was the Pac-10 team of the 90s, guys. They won 70% uh, like of their games, 82 wins in the 90s. They lead here by six. And a touchback. And speaking of Washington history, rich in tradition, 625 wins, who is their best all-time players. It's a George Wilson from back in the 20s, where you come a few decades later to Hugh McElhaney, just say the name and the legend so in part of Washington football. More recent days, you have Steve Etman and one of the great running backs, Napoleon Kaufman, the all-time leading rusher in UW history. ESPN.com, you can vote, and we'll have the results of the all-time polls for Washington and Texas in the second half. All right, let's see what Applewhite will do here. From the 20 with 47 seconds left, Washington drops seven in coverage with a shovel pass to Brett Robin. Got out to the 36-yard line. Texas will keep going. Two timeouts left and now stop the clock. 39 seconds. I can't tell you how much I love this play. Let me tell you why the play is so good. What it does, it allows the defensive lineman to come in and rush the passer. Then he slips the ball in a little pitch out to that man. In that case, it was Robbins. But the key to the thing is you allow the lineman to rush in mm -hmm. and you slip it to him. It's a draw, only you flip it to him instead of hand it to him. Boy, I love that play. Robin caught 16 balls this year for the Longhorns. Certainly a part of their pass game. He's from Austin. So many of the Texas players are in-staters. As a matter of fact, 87% of the UT roster in-state players. And Mac Brown is such a great recruiter. I'd love to, you want to talk about a TV show to create? I'll put three high school kids, respected Division I football players in a room with Mac Brown and Rick Neuheisel. I'll let them put the recruiting oh. pitch on. And they are two of the best. Let's put four in. That way two guys can, get, you know, two guys are going to go to Texas and two to go to Washington. It's not to say the other guys aren't good around the country, like, you no know, Steve oh. Spurrier and Bobby Bowden yeah, and you know, all the guys. But these guys have that charm to kind of light up a room, and, and they make Seattle and Austin even better than those cities are. That's hard to do, because those are two fabulous cities and great state universities. Texas has 118 players on his roster, 102 from the state of Texas. First and 10, right at the 36. And one timeout still to you. It's been Cooper, Terry Johnson with interceptions. Joe Collier caught a touchdown. And now Washington, two timeouts, 33 seconds, can add to its lead. Escape earlier in this game, got a hand on a football and it was intercepted by Madami. This time he gets a hand on the ball right into his hands and he kicks it back up again. And this time Cooper makes a big interception and Washington's going to try to come away with some points here and a lot of momentum going in at halftime. This is where stats lie. Three interceptions by Major. You know, that one's certainly not his fault. Huskies take over the first down at 10. What a great opportunity here. They get the pocket, collapses. He takes off, gets to the 35. You got two timeouts here. You want to use one of them. He was getting up looking for the face mask penalty, but needed to save those couple of seconds and call timeout. Washington leads by six. Let's check in with Steve Cyphers. All right, Coach Don, and what are your impressions so far? How are you playing? Been some great momentum changes in that. Our team practiced the two minute all week and they're getting a lot of chances to run it. Do you, do you have a play coming up? Yeah, I think they're going to try to hit uh, Williams on a crossing route. All right, Coach, tell me how you, how's your play? Well, Texas just needs to hang on right here and play because the last defensive stand was so different than the rest of the defensive game for them. They were not good in the last stand. They need to make a play right here to get off the field down six. Giving any thought to changing quarterbacks, going no. to Sims? No. 
because I think Apple White showed uh, what he's made out of when he came back. The last interception was a drop ball, and I think it just need to stay right there with him. All right, guys. Mike, that's it from this, the Burge booth. Thanks, Steve. Uh, to amplify Dick Tomey's point, 161 yards passing in this quarter for Apple White, and there's the player that Jim Donnan thinks Washington may be looking his way. The true freshman Reggie Williams, who had three touchdowns this season. We said grade your season nearly a thousand yards and 55 catches he said a minus and Kirk said a minus what do you mean he said, oh. I said what, why the minus and he said only three touchdowns and we said how many should you have to get into an a 10 15 <laughs> oh, man. And the 35 they okay. release to Hurst Willie Hurst used that sideline 23 out of bounds with 14 seconds left. Pick up of a dozen. Tackle made by Lewis. Also in on the tackle. Got out of bounds there. There's a little confusion. Willie Hurst sets this up good. Good blocking downfield, not only by the linemen, but the wide receivers picking up their men, giving Hurst enough time to get down there and pick up valuable yardage. Little confusion afterwards whether or not he got out of bounds. He, in fact, did and allowed Washington to get into a huddle and call another play. Williams, top of your screen. When you see from the play angle. crossing route that Jim Donnan thought would come but he couldn't hang on as Quentin Jammer was there with him. Now that was a National Football League play Sunday by Quentin Jammer. The pass is perfect to Williams but he plays perfect position. Now watch him come right over here with his left hand and does not make a pass interference call with his right hand. You notice that? Mm -hmm. The reason why that's not pass interference is he reached on with his left hand and did not touch him in the back with the right hand. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a National Football League play. That's why he's the first ever Jim Thorpe finalist in the history of Texas football. Second and 10 with 10 seconds left. Gotta be quick. Pick it for Williams. Great effort. Couldn't hang on. Four seconds left. From here, a field goal attempt would be 41 yards. Williams is hurt. He sacrificed and laid out on that one. A classy move by the Texas medical staff as uh, they came over to check on Williams and just keep him there for a second till the Washington training staff comes over. Came down on that right shoulder. Mm. That time working on Nathan Vasher. A lot of times when you come down, it's either the wind got knocked out of you or possibly the the shoulder because a lot of a lot of the momentum came on that right side. See him turn his body after he misses the ball comes down right on the right side and yeah, that, that could be the uh, just a wind knocked out of him as well because he's up on it on a knee. Vasher does a nice job here. Uh, yeah, he does to hang with Williams because uh, Vasher doesn't have the physical presence that Quinton Jammer does. Giving away 20 pounds and a couple of inches. Banner year for Williams is a true freshman. And comes off gingerly. I'm sure they'll uh, send him right over to the locker room with just a few seconds left before halftime. He's the first true freshman in the history of Washington to start a game. The beginning of the year and he did it against Michigan as I said in the pregame show he only caught four passes for 134 yards against the big blue in the opener and he not had, bad would have had a touchdown but he ran out of his shoe <laughs> when I played down the sidelines and then in their big game the Apple Cup he had 203 on 11 grass and what's <laughs> interesting is his final two schools were Michigan and Washington so it was uh, it was it was very bizarre for him in his first game out Anderson from 40 well, after as ugly a field goal kick as you could see in the first half, he hit three in a row. They take advantage of the turnover with a field goal after a scoreless first period, 37 in the second. Here's Jerry with Mac Brown. 
Coach, uh, offensively, you struggled a little bit earlier. Senior quarterback brought you back, but turnovers and the lack of a running game has hurt you a little bit in the first half. Well, I think uh, turnovers have hurt us the worst, Jerry. We've got 14 points on the board. If we didn't put our defense in a tough spot, uh, we'd be in good shape during the ball game. And turnovers hurt us uh, last time in the championship game. So we got to correct the turn turnovers for some. They've gotten points off their three. They've gotten 13 points off or 16 points off three, 13 points off three turnovers. Uh, we got seven points off one of our turnovers. We got to get more turnovers. And we had the total momentum with a minute 44 left in the half. They take the ball 82 yards and score. We get the ball the second half. We got to go back. This is going to be a typical holiday bowl where it's crazy and both teams are going to score some. We got to get the momentum back to start second half. They're a good team. De defensively adjusted all to stop the short passing game. Well, the thing we've got to do is play better. We're not getting any pressure on them. They're keeping a lot of guys into block. They've done a good job with the screen, good job with misdirection. Uh, we got to play better on defense, and we're playing. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Oh, man. Kirk and I looked at each other four weeks ago somewhere. We were dying for food. We called and ordered a pizza to the booth, and it got here. Life is good, as somebody I know says. Well, there is Major Applewhite getting set for this uh, second half. Final half that he will play in the Burnt Arms of Texas. Chris Sims will be his team next year. Tonight he is a spectator on the sidelines for Coach Mack Brown. I was uh, over getting a Coke at halftime, and I heard this is an all, that was an all-time record. 37 points in one quarter was an all-time Holiday Bowl record. Oh, that's most time. points scored in any quarter by two teams. You know that? Wow. I do now. There you go. I'm telling you, I think the record used to be 35, but now 37 points in one quarter is an all-time record. In, in this bowl game, that's this bowl game. We start the second half with Herbert Kill, who lost his footing at the 35-yard line. The tackle will be credited to Tim Galloway. But those the Longhorn offense on the field. If you are just joining us, Cedric Benson, the best true freshman running back in the country out of Midland, uh, Texas, over 1,000 yards this year. The Stinger suffered in the Colorado game, and even though he was injured 27 days ago, not the strength to have the confidence to hold the ball when absorbing contact, which he hasn't seen thus far in the practice leading up to the bowl game. Been Victor Ike and Ivan Williams in the backfield. But the receivers will win this game if Texas gets it done. Applewhite thinking long. Coming back for it is Williams. He stayed in bounds at the 44. Texas comes right back to Major Applewhite and asks him to make plays. First half, the thing that has hurt Major is the interception. Here, going behind Ben State, Bo State, and State tips the ball to Madami, the interception. This time, the defender just did a good job of reading it, and Terry Johnson, another one with State, misses it. Interception, Marquise Cooper, and take away the turnovers that have been a key to Texas' this entire season. Ten wins, they've created 26, and only had nine turnovers, and had two losses, eight turnovers, three already tonight. That power back, Ivan Williams, takes it forward to the 40-yard line. Major Applewhite, he arrived on campus as an unheralded recruit, named after the Alabama running back, Major Ogilvy. Named after an Alabama back, grew up in Baton Rouge, and is uh, part of the legend of Austin, 44 school record. Wants to take a shot at the National Football League as a player, might have a chance to catch on with the team. But certainly, uh, after he got that opportunity, coaching, college coaching, something he truly wants to do. <laughs> this is a second and six swing pass that's knocked down by Larry Triplett. Larry Triplett, number 70, has got such great speed and quickness. He's six foot one, and watch him make a little spin move, which means he comes around to the outside, right there. You notice number 70? Puts his hands up. Now, one of the reasons why Apple White will have a difficult time in the National Football League is because he's only six foot one, and I think that's budget. The fact is that guys like Triplett, or even taller, will knock that ball back into a curtain. I don't think he's tall enough to be a National Football League quarterback. That's my opinion. Third and six. Four in the pattern. The blitz is picked up. And underneath, Kyle Shanahan with the catch to the 37-yard line. That's shy of the first down. For the son of the Denver Broncos head coach, Mike Shanahan. 
We had a great success in this stadium. Kyle transferred from Duke. His best buddy on the team is Christian. And uh, Kyle and Chris are headed out to Denver this weekend to watch the Raiders Broncos game. Kyle's dad, of course, coaching. Uh, Chris's dad, Phil Sims, is broadcasting the game on CBS. You see Chris with a little clap of the hand for his buddy who's now caught eight passes on the season. We're going to try a long field goal here. A 54 yarder, unless they pooch it. Mangum hit a 51 yarder, and they do pooch it perfectly. Very well done. Dusty Mangum will give Washington 91 yards to move down the field. And Jerry Punch, what was Rick Neuheisel talking about at halftime? Uh, you know, Mike, very much like a classroom setting in the locker room in Washington at halftime. On the offensive side, Keith Gilbertson breaking it down, basically very pleased with what they've done offensively. They would like to establish a run some in the second half, and I think some of the uh, Washington players believe that the Texas defensive front is getting a little bit tired about getting worn out, so they want to be able to run the ball defensively. Uh, much more animated the defensive side of the locker room uh, for Washington at halftime. Some, uh, some heated discussions from the defensive coaches want them to get more aggressive in the secondary trying to stop the Texas deep ball. Mike? All right, Doc, from the nine, a three-yard run for Willie Hurst, the senior tailback. Willie Hurst, I mentioned earlier, was the offensive MVP. He was also voted the most inspirational teammate by his teammates. Willie was a wide receiver, got moved out to wide receiver after a couple years and did not want to play wide receiver at all. He admits he was somewhat immature about how he acted in his days trying to learn the wide receiver spot. Had a helmet throwing incident. That word got back to his mother via the newspaper about that. But Willie said, I'll come back to running back. And Rick Neuheisel said, at the back of the line, you will. You'll be fourth string. Injuries gave him a chance, and this uh, penalty will move him back a few yards. Injuries gave him a chance last year, and uh, Willie Hurst stuck with it. Carried the load this year as a senior and is in the top ten all-time in rushing yards at Washington. A great tribute to him also that he was elected captain of his football team. And I think that's one of the greatest honors any player can have. Dead ball. Ball short. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. Feet. Second down classic case though of, of having perseverance and, and overcoming some adversity in your college career and Willie Hurst has been able to do that. There's been a lot of players out there that have been asked to move positions. Sometimes they move and it, it makes them a better player. Other times they get moved back. And Willie Hurst's case when he got moved back, he said, just tell me I'm going to get a chance. I, that's all I need to hear. Coach Neuheisel, tell me you're going to get a chance. And Coach Neuheisel said, there, chance, some chances will come and go, but you will get a chance. He said, that's all I needed to hear. And true hard work, he found himself, he found himself this year in the starting lineup. Second and 13, Reggie Williams hurt at the end of the first half and back on the field. Here's Pickett, Stevens, tight end. Great open field tackle by Jammer, yard shy of the first down. Third and one coming up. Matchup there, Stevens in the open field against Quentin Jammer one on one. Washington had a bunch of third and short in the go for 50. First left side, first down, and much more. Galloping to the 29 yard line. They needed one, they got 10. First down, Husky. Texas crowded everybody up inside in the middle. They walked their linebackers up in the middle, and you could tell that the play was either going to bounce to the outside or maybe an option. Look at all the orange jerseys up in the middle. And I think Willie Hurst did a great job of recognizing that and instantly after he got the handoff, bouncing it to the outside and picking up that first down. Number 65, Khalif Barnes, the left tackle, really did a nice job of collapsing in the defensive end, allowing him to bounce out. Nice play by 65 Barnes. A red shirt freshman, first down. Pickett. Stevens. Pick up eight and a half. They're really good when they just move the pocket a little bit. And this big truck is coming across the middle of the field. He's a tough matchup. Oh. He's a tough matchup for a linebacker because of his speed. He's a tough matchup for a safety because of his size. It's almost like a, uh, a three wingman who can, has the size to post the little guy up and the ability outside to take him outside and knock down the outside jumper. He, he's a tough matchup and 
I think tonight we're seeing Texas trying to run with him and the inability to do so. You going Dickie V on me then? The three man? Forget about it. <laughs> Second and two. About a yard. I think it might have been Cody Redding. He got an arm in on Hurst as he was going forward. It, it was. It's 6'5", 260. Uh, it's so repetitive. The Texas team is the most impressive physical team, one of the most, that you'll ever find. Kirk had a great line about uh, Cody Redding out of Houston. Well, I said when we saw him yesterday, just talking to him, when he, when he walked into the room, he just... When you're a little kid and you think about what a, a big NFL football player looks like, that's he is the prototype god of an NFL football player. Corey Reddy. Third and a yard and a half. A quick toss for it. It is complete to Elf, or rather to Patrick Reddy, who did a really nice job of holding on through the contact. Badger lost his helmet. First down, Washington. I think what Washington's doing a nice job of here is they're mixing up the play calling. Not only run with pass, but the types of passes that, that they're trying to throw right now with Cody Pickett. They're moving the pocket a little bit. Sometimes he'll drop it back. He's spreading the ball to the tight end, to the back, to the, to the wide receivers. Tough to defend for Texas. Arnold in motion. Pickett looks his way. Incomplete. Redding, he's got a piece of it. Washington wanted to establish the run a little bit more in the second half. The reason they like to do that, just enough, just enough out of their running game to make the Texas defense respect that aspect, then it's going to open up all the different ways that the Washington's offense can attack it. Here is second and ten. They put Jammer off the corner on the other side of Steven. The ball came out after he hit the ground. Pick up a base. Third and two coming up. So here's a guy who, because of the injuries, was limited to just 10 catches this year. He has six in the first 35 minutes and 45 seconds tonight. When, when we met with the Washington players, and he walked into the room, and then after he left, the first thing I said to you is, I know we're excited about Reggie Williams and Quentin Jammer, I said, but I want to see how Texas safeties and linebackers match up with Jeremy Stevens, because now that he's healthy, and with the style of defense that Texas plays, so much man coverage, I think Washington's going to try to go to Stevens, and they're doing that so far. Picked up a third down conversion on this drive, third and two, game section, first runs left. That is 18. First down. Yard. You got to get to number 67, Nick Newton. Number 65, Khalif Barnes. In the center, Kyle Ben. The reason why this play works is not only did he come off the ball well, but they got a good lead block right there. If you notice, the fullback, Ken Walker, blocked the linebacker who was trying to sweep in the play. You see, why did that play work so good? Reason? Good offensive line good, but most important, a lead block by the fullback, Ken Walker. Is that Napoleon Kaufman or Will Curry? Whoa! He came flying through that hole. From the 30, first down, toss again. He had to put air under it as those defensive linemen were bearing in on him and could not find Hurst on the other side. First down pass there. It's about play selection and how a game evolves as the night goes on. The number of passes to run. And the mix is interesting tonight for Washington. They're not a good running team this year. Texas is a very good run defense. Washington's run it 17 times. Thrown it 34. Two to one ratio passes to run tonight. Cody Pickett could be looking at a 50 pass game. Second and 10. And it's caught. And Jammer fell. Williams made the ground. We touched on this earlier. This is a lot to do with Cody Pickett and the throw. The timing of the throw. He's going to push it right now to the outside, away from Quentin Jammer. Exciting to watch those two guys go against each other, but that was Cody Pickett putting the ball number one on time. Ooh, and number two away from Quentin Jammer. All 
So number 40, Corey Rennie was right in Pickett's face, and he still delivered the ball. In the league right now, the red flag will be out to be reviewed. It would be a catch. <laughs> it's first and ten for the red zone. As Pickett looks, comes back to Stevens. He's at the ten. He's at the five. Plays 91 yard drive touchdown as good as you can do anywhere, including on Sunday. John Anderson on for the extra point. I knew Washington would play all right tonight. I did not think that in 36 minutes, 37 minutes, they would score 30 points on this Texas defense. Yards out of bounds there. <laughs> Takes him down. That'll give Texas a first down and uh, may give them a chance to gain a little bit of momentum. And Ricky Rival is frustrated at the officials, but at the same time, frustrated with his senior as well. Speaking of momentum, remember, Applewhite brought Texas back with 27 points to try to catch Colorado without Benson in there. Mm -hmm. And most important, Washington does not know how to play with a 30 to 14 lead. <laughs> they, never, they have never been in this situation. They're always coming from behind. You know what? They might be just a little bit too far behind. No Texas by getting some of the most men. The penalty makes it first and 10 from the 45. Five receivers in the pattern for Applewhite. BJ Johnson, he'll run. Roy Williams gets most of the recognition. 
nothing for this receiving core, but C.J. Johnson, I think he's probably the most dynamic receiver, most complete receiver right now on this roster. He's a sophomore, 41 catches on the year, and a good zone coverage here. Nice throw to Applewhite. Big hit by Juan Davis, and a nice job of Johnson to hold on the ball. C.J. Johnson, three catches, 92 yards. Exclusively in the air, Coach Keith. The tight end kicks it to the 15-yard line. Pick up a Remember, this is the perfect situation for Major Applewhite. He loves to bring his team from behind. He loves to do with the pass again. I would recommend that little double pass again to keep the pressure off him. And also get this guy, Ivan Williams, number 26, running a case. Just to keep the pressure off uh, Applewhite. Got to stick a run in here somewhere. Yeah, keep him honest, yeah, right? Just keep him honest. There's Williams in the backfield. Now in motion. Four options to throw. Tony Gentry, the red shirt freshman from Houston. Working on Rock Alexander. So a lot of football these plays. You mentioned the possibility of Texas being able to score major applied, bringing them back. It also has to do with the style of offense, you know the people that are most excited right now on the field are the Texas wide receivers, because they know now that they're going to have a chance to make plays. Not, we all know this because we've seen them play a number of times. Texas wide receivers as a group are as gifted physically as any you'll find in the nation. Second and ten. So Washington gets some pressure on Apple White. A run with Williams. To the third now the third behind that draw play is even if you don't make with three or four yards, at least you get the defensive lineman from getting their ears back and just rushing the pass. That was a good call. Now I would look for number four, Roy Williams, somehow, if he will make a sensational play down here to score. Johnson in motion at the top. Black. Boca 
Raton, Florida. Frederick gets on a plane tomorrow morning, heads to St. Louis, and joins the Washington basketball team. He's a top 25 recruit in basketball, an excellent player. He'll join Bob Bender's squad, who has a game tomorrow against the, the Billikens in St. Louis. Johnson of moving to the wrong area. Now, let me tell you something. The only way you can stop that play is to have the backside linebacker squat and stay at home and play that play. Because if they continue to go with the flow, they're dead. Keep going to it, right? I mean, just keep going to it. From the 49. Squirted forward to the 46. Stevens got his helmet knocked off in the block there. The thing that makes it tough on Stevens, or, or to defend Stevens on a crossing route is if it's man coverage, he's going to kind of use a staircase technique and just keep moving away from the defender. If it's, if it's zone, he's going to run to an open area and then they're going to find him there. And in this case, because Texas played so much man, he's just running away from the defender, but Texas isn't even covering, so he's wide open. But the offside linebacker doesn't have a man assigned to him. He should stay at home. He's running across the field. Second down, Hurst finds an opening!
going for two here. A little confusion. They are thinking about going for two. Half time with the play clock down at 18. The margin is 19. A two-point conversion here. Getting up to 21. That's why New Highs will go for two here. They send Elstrom and Reddick to the top of the screen. Play clock at two and one. They get it off. And Hurst will throw it. And it's intercepted by Quentin Jammer, who can return it for a defensive two-point conversion. But he's taken down at the five. So the lead remains 19 at 36-17. So give up a two-point play. It didn't work. The last four Washington possessions of field goal and three touchdowns. Willie Hurst is over 100 yards. And the defense that gave up under 14 points a game this year has given up 36. What do you think of Texas? Now 19. We'll come back and find out. familiar fight song nationally but uh, go dogs go is pretty good <laughs> sounds like you read to the kids go dog go it's one of those little dolls he squeezes the hand and it plays the fight song that's what that is <laughs> six plays 65 yards Hurst carried the load on that drive after stevens on the prior drive 19 is the lead Irvis Hill across the 20, tries to turn the corner. He gets knocked down at the 36 of the yard line. Yes. Okay. 29 on the return. Let's take you back to the big play. Okay, touchdown. now first of all, let's take a look. There's no safeties in that area. There's the safety. That's number one. Second thing, watch the middle linebacker, D.D. Lewis, over pursuit of play right there. And the big tackle, the guard, Nick Newton, makes the play. The reason why that play was very good, they didn't have a safety, number one, and number two, D.D. D.D. Lewis. D.D. Lewis. Over pursuit. I was trying to look at if there was another linebacker there, but it was just D.D. Lewis's play. And that big old tackle, Nick guard, Nick Newton, Six foot four, 315 pounds to speed him up alive. That's why the play works so good. Down 19. 1840 to go in the game. Still time. Roy Williams to catch. A great job to not take a knee and gets it out for a first down to the 49 yard line. Well, this uh, Texas defense, statistically among the best in the country the last two games, has been beaten up. Talk all we want about Major Applewhite and his ability to bring an offense back. But if the defense doesn't turn things around, it's not going to matter what Major Applewhite and this offense can do. It's been a tough night for Carl Reed in the Longhorn defense. And they've given up 30 of those points, some in a short field situation. One touchdown did come on an interception return. Boy, there's the shovel and pass. That plays. Ivan Williams. It's your play and your guy, Lee. And Williams bowls over Roger Green to take it to the 34. Remember, I'm going to bring this point up again. Major Applewhite scored 27 points against Colorado in the second half. Brought a two -side. He's capable of doing it. If he can get some good plays like this nice little Utah shovel pass right there. To Ivan Williams has a circle back really soon. Good job by Williams. Down. 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 Game for the Longhorn. Let's catch up. DJ Johnson pulled down at the 24 yard line. Taken to the ground by Zach Tui off the sofa. Yes, the brother of. The quarterback now of the Raiders, formerly of Washington, Marcus Tuiasosopo, continuing a great family athletic tradition at the University of Washington. Of course, uh, their sister is a very good volleyball player, Leslie. And as a matter of fact, she's returned to Washington as an assistant coach for the Washington volleyball team. Second and in inches. Triplett hanging on as Williams 
moves it forward for the first down at the 20 yard line good looking drive here down 19 we come up on two minutes third quarter if I was calling the plays for Texas right now, I would go for touchdowns the next three times I'm down there. Forget the field goal. You're not going to catch them with three because your defense can't hold them. So I would use four downs right now if I was Greg Davis to try to score touchdowns the next three times I get down here. At this stage of the game, they almost passed here down 19 points. Play action after one. To the fullback, Matt Crystal. He bowls four to the five. First and goal. The 15 yard reception is the longest of the season for the junior from Keene, Texas. You can see a different mentality from the Texas offense, a more aggressive attitude. It's a shame it's taken them to get down to have this kind of attitude, but it, it was missing early in the game, and we've seen it in the second half when they, they kind of felt desperate. And when teams get desperate, they realize that they're fighting not only the defense, but also the clock, and they take it up a notch. And that's what Texas has done right now. First and goal. Wide movement, no flag. Takes to slow down as well, and the hit out of bounds. I think that's a gentleman who's uh, marking it down as well. Looks like everybody over there is okay on the Ivan Williams carry. That was an ugly-looking play, wasn't it? Or, half the Washington guys pointed, half the players on the field stopped. The Texas guys thought they were all stopped. Hey. Hey, hey, must have been movement on the right side, but... Ugly. Look at that. Half the guys check. <laughs> the new defensive strategy. Yeah. They'll sweep the country. Just start pointing Point at guys, them. Yeah. Well, you would think that Roy Williams, with his size, against Amari Lowe, number 12, the bottom of the screen, would be a matchup Texas one. Looking that way is Apple White, and comes back to B.J. Johnson incomplete. Third and goal, but as uh, Lee suggested... Oh, yes. I, really, I really think that this is a peak play situation. I would not go crazy. I make sure I get a good play to get in close and then score. Even if I don't score, I leave the ball down there about the one-yard line or two, and maybe my team can go get a silver. You gotta go. Throw the ball into the end zone. Not necessarily because you throw the ball, have a guy break the tackle into the end zone. That's just as good. Sloan Thomas is the receiver at the top of the screen. Johnson in the slot. Applewhite looking and nothing there. As the second time on third and goal, there's been nothing open. And that's why he's just throwing it up to the top. And now a decision here. The field goal kick has started to run on. But as you guys suggested, Max backed him up at first. And now will go for the field goal to try to make it a 16 point or two possession game. One of the things, he gets three points, which is wonderful. But he gives up about 45 yards of field position. And his defense hasn't stopped them yet. I would not kick this field goal. Not a second guess. I'd have tried to get a touchdown. If I didn't get it, I'd leave the ball down there. Mangum from 24. Gets them closer. Mack Brown's offense did move it down the field. Major Applewhite has thrown tonight for 324 yards. He looks at the hotel Del Coronado. Texas is looking for a top 10 finish here in 2001. Something they have not enjoyed since 1983. They're looking for an 11-win season that's only happened four times in the history of the program. Kicking off. So, Frederick from the 10. Taken down at the 26-yard line. Play by Philip Eager. The safety high above the Goodyear Blip Eagle, providing the aerial pictures tonight. 2001 is the 103rd anniversary of Goodyear and the 76 for its Flint Fleet. We thank Louis Navarro for the pictures tonight for above Qualcomm Stadium here in San Diego. The only home this bowl game is known. And the site of the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 22 and 32. And the home of the Padres for one more year. The baseball team was downtown. 2003. Rich Alexis now runs. We'll go far, get about three yards. Jermaine Anderson. Pulled him down. Seen a lot more of Anderson after Caleb Thornton was injured in the first half. 
under a minute to go now in the third quarter. It is up to the Texas defense to show some leadership and some pride and get the ball back to the Texas offense. Tonight, Washington's had the ball 11 times. Eight times they've gotten into Texas territory, and the last four possessions have been touchdown, field goal, touchdown, and a touchdown. The Texas needs to take a stance right now if they're going to get back into this game. to the end of the third quarter. Quite a quarter for that man, Jeremy Stevens, the junior from Olympia, Washington. Ten catches in an injury-plagued season. Eight catches tonight of Washington. To 36 points in the second and third quarter. And up we go to the fourth at the Holiday Bowl with Rick Neuheisel's team up 16. Go off his hands. 
turn into interceptions, and that time he had a first down and much more. But he forgot the most important piece. Every time Washington's gotten into the zone defense, Texas has gotten upfield vertically into the team, whether it's into a wide receiver like D.J. Johnson or a tight end. They've hit some and they've missed some. That time they drop White, great throw, right into the hands of Scape for, the, for big yards. And Scape, I think, maybe got ahead of himself looking downfield and dropped the ball. You notice two key plays with a counter trap in that place, getting the ball up the field so the lineman can push forward and then always retreat. And I think that's why I like to run occasionally. There's nothing else to get your offensive lineman to come off the football instead of retreating, and they get more and more aggressive. I like that call. The lineman likes to shoot. You know, they, do. they like to well, they run it. Throwing them a piece of meat once in a while. Right, so. There's a shovel pass to Robin. He gets down to the four-yard line. A lot of that shovel pass is part of the Texas offense. Four yards for Mac Brown. He needs to try to get that touchdown and two-point conversion. It's not so important for Texas to get the ball downfield when they're back when they're backed up further and deeper in their own territory, but it is important to get in and out of the huddle quick. That's the most important thing. In and out of the huddle in a quick tempo because it walks through the faster. Way nine of the drive is second and goal from the four. That's to be adjustment by Applewhite. Look at the man coverage. And a flag is down. Trying to run that little rub route. Mm -hmm. Washington's not going to hang on here. Again, the Mountain West conference officials working this Pelican Holiday Bowl. Pass interference. Be fair. The penalty was placed at the two yard line. Automatic first down. 
offense in a rub route, and this is just, you have two defenders, Chris Massey and Amari Lowe, they, they kind of sandwich D.J. Johnson, but I don't think that Omari Lowe meant to come in there and, and, and be in a position to hold up D.J. Johnson. He kind of got forced into him. Defensive coaches call it a pick play. Yep. Offensive coaches call it a rub route. Touchdown of the 2000 season. The delay is just for the uh, spotting of the ball, and Texas wants it in the middle. What a two point conversion. Yeah, I don't agree going for two here. You don't? No, because I, I could get a touchdown in the field going tie this game. If I miss this one, I'm almost out of it. Then I'm going to get 10 points to tie the game. That's just my opinion. It's incomplete. They want to flag. This game's not going to get it. So both teams have gone for two and missed, thus negating the choices, and we're still in a 10 point game. 36-26. Vivo has got more work to do. Expected high scoring game tonight in San Diego. Washington leads 36-26. Alexander fell on it. Let's go over to our ESPN.com Verge Friday booth here in Qualcomm Stadium. Steve Fletcher. Thanks, Mike, with uh, Washington coach Donnan. Ten-point lead, so much time remaining. How does that affect the rest of the game plan? Uh, Steve, this is why you play and coach college football and have a chance to win a big game like this. Uh, I think Washington's got to keep attacking, mixing up the run and pass, but uh, this, they're right where they want to be, and, and missing that two-point play was big because they got to get two scores. All right, Mike, more after this. Okay, come back to the two. Coach Tommy thinks about Texas. A first down run with Hurt. Good tackle by the true freshman from Waco, Derek Johnson. Right, Steve. Coach Tommy, I guess uh, a comeback is doable. How do you do it? Well, you've got to play great defense first, Steve. They've got to stop one defense. I think they need to be prepared to use timeouts on, on defense to preserve time and go no huddle on offense if it gets too late. All right, good enough. Just uh, clicking in here for the TV logo on ESPN.com, and you're there, Mike. Exactly, you're here. We're here and there. We're watching here on our monitor up in the booth. Interesting stuff tonight. Watch out for Jeremy Stevens on the drag route. Second and ten drop. Hurst has an incomplete. Yeah, he got the attention of the uh, defense there. That time, Kalen Thornton came into that snap. Try to go. He's been out most of this game. But 43, the right end, the starter, the sophomore, has come back off the field. That injury is preventing him from going. That time on second and 10, Washington trying to get the ball to Jeremy Stevens again. But the play can have killed, uh, killed Texas in the second half. This time, they went back to Nathan Vasher and man to man. Forget about the linebackers. Let them put the pressure on. Nathan Vasher is a strong safety. Locked him down in one-on-one -on -one coverage. A little sense of urgency here. Looking for a second straight three and out. about this because of the fact that psychologically we were not sure Washington would know how to play with the lead in the fourth quarter. But I've had teams like that. They don't know how to play. They get too conservative. They make mistakes. The other way they play right and loose. I'm telling you. Derek Johnson comes underneath the All-American candidate, Jeremy Stevens. Jeremy Stevens has hurt Texas all night by catching the ball. That time the freshman cuts underneath to get to the quarterback, Cody Pickett. Texas is close to a return here the last few times. Vasher, fourth snap, McLaughlin gets it away and gets away his best kick. 
feet for the night. Vasher fair catches it at the 46. Good job under pressure. Got a big ball by the pressure. I know the kick only was 42, but that was the net as well. Now it's an important one on a fourth net. We're coming across the midnight hour back on the East Coast. The Sports Center is on your way. As soon as we're done with Carl Rabbit and Linda Cohen, talk about Najee Davenport's absence and what it means to Miami. Brett Favre's future. We're not talking Boomer Berman, but Boomer has been well back to New York, perhaps. Sports Center coming up as soon as we're done with Rabbit and Linda tonight. And remember, the whole week action continues with a triple header tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN2. Boy down 10. Love it up. Looking long for Roy Williams. It's under throw, but Williams coming anyway. 39 yards, they're back in the red zone. And watching Roy Williams play these last two years, I know everybody talks about his physical ability. You talk about how he could be the best receiver to ever play at Texas, and I agree with all that, but he hasn't played with a passion. Tonight, he's been playing with a passion. He goes up, he has the timing, he has the total package as far as his physical ability. Tonight, whether he's been blocking or he's been receiving, he's playing with an attitude. Two things, double pass and reverse. Both those plays have been very, very good for Texas. They should use them soon. All the momentum in the burnt orange. Here comes Crystal, out of bounds at the 14. Takes up about three yards there, about two really. This is a perfect spot. I've always loved the reverse play down here because they usually play in man for man. And when you send everybody one way, everybody runs, and you can come back with one of those guys. A reverse play would be a good call here. I think also that Utah double pass would be a good call. Those are the two plays, Kirk, that I would like to see Texas use yep. to get in there. For that last play, Major Appleway got pressure. If he would have had a little bit more time, he had a simple flag route, post corner to the tight end, both stays to it beaten his man and was all alone in the back of the end zone. I think Washington on their heels right now is a defense. Applewhite hit his last kick. Williams out of the game on this play. Flag comes down as Washington entered the neutral zone. Communication with Matthew Andrews in the center and Applewhite, the quarterback, got the snap there quickly. Like they got Jerome Stevens to jump off there. in about three online on our Verge Friday, ESPN.com. Can the Longhorns come back and win? We've been polling you in our Verge Friday area. And many of you think they can. So that number will go up with this score here. <laughs> Ivan Williams. Going to have the first down. <laughs> or be darn close to it. That's the six. He's got it. Momentum has switched so dramatically here in the, in the last five minutes of this ball game. I remember we were talking about when Texas was down by a few scores. They were down by 19 points at one time. We we're talking about, boy, time, the time of this game is really a factor. It's really an enemy for Texas. Boy, if they score here with close to nine minutes to go, they have plenty of time now. And it's turned like that. Well, I said Texas, see what you're made of because the rap against this team is winning the big game. Now, they beat Texas A&M a couple of times. The big game is they lose it, but if they win it, it's not remembered as a big game. The same thing tonight. You beat Washington, number 20 in the country, Pac-10, runner-up, first down. Is it seen as a big win? Well, maybe by some. I don't think by the whole of Texas fans. It's a shame. It is a shame. That's my point. But if Texas wins this football game with the number of people they're coming back, they'll be one, two, or three in sure. the nation in sure. season. I, I think you know, Max Brown was looking for a carrot to dangle out there. 11 wins, fifth time in program history, top 10 yeah. finish haven't had since the early 80s. I think that's a legitimate carrot. It sounds like a load of bumps to people out there. But I think from a foundation standpoint, it makes the winner go by with a real hope of a championship dream in 02. Williams to the one. It also helps you recruiting. 
When you win a bowl game, you'd be surprised. There's every football player in America in high school now watching this football game. And there's some, some kids are going to sway say, you know, I love that. Kirk will say, I love that background. I love that Texas, the way they came back. It helps you. The momentum, I think, is key in these bowl games. It's just so often we get caught up in the BCS and the big games. But the momentum that can be gained in these bowl games is crucial. And, and anytime you have a big conferences match up against each other, it's always a big win. It's more of a victory. It is Williams' right side, and markers come down. And Washington get a timeout. They had too many players on the field. And I think they got the timeout call before the snap. Prior to the snap, we have a timeout, Washington. That is the first hard timeout of the half. The two Heisel team digging in, trying to hold on. The lead is 10, but Texas is knocking on touchdown short. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Culligan Holiday Bowl is presented by Culligan. For a no-cost, no-obligation in-home water analysis, contact your local Culligan man at Culligan.com. And in part by Capital One, proud sponsor of the Capital One Florida Citrus Bowl on January 1st. far from downtown San Diego. We welcome you back to the best of the non-New Year's Day bowl games. 24th Culligan Holiday Bowl. Always high scoring and entertaining. Always close and starting to smell like the old Holiday Bowl again here. Texas looking for the tying touchdown or for the touchdown to get within three. Williams towering forward. Did he break the play? He'll come in and check. Cedric Benson here tonight. Texas, 499 yards of offense on 71 plays. And 33 points. The Longhorns were down 19. We asked what they're made of. Some character and some heart. Ivan Williams got that ball across the plane as he looked right down the goal line. You know, we've got uh, Kirk and you and I, Mike, to talk a lot about Keith Gilbertson, the great offensive coordinator for Washington. Well, right now, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to earn his pay. He's got to get them back in the way of being more aggressive and not worry about making a mistake. Run the ball, throw it, get good balance. But the key to this whole thing, Kirk, is I think you got to have a mixture of plays the way they can keep the Texas team who is going crazy blitzing off that. Let's give a lot of credit to Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator. In the last two possessions for Washington, and this is following, they had four straight scoring possessions. The last two, they stopped them three and out, and I think they've made adjustments on Jeremy Stevens, which killed him earlier in this half, and they're being more aggressive, and they're getting the ball back, but they're also taking away what was working for right. Washington. You know, Carl Reese is one of the six finalists for the Frank Boyles Award, which goes to the assistant coach of the year. And the last two guys to win that, I think, were Mike Mangione and Ralph Regis, head coach, head coach. Also, Lars, head coach. The year of the fat head coach. <laughs> it is. No, before Ralph Regis became a head coach, you couldn't get a, a real heavy set guy on the sideline because he didn't look the part. Ralph is now coach of the year, and all of a sudden they're looking for a nice heavy set guy. I'm telling you, it's goals and strength, Mike. I've seen it all my life. Tall guys get jobs, short guys get jobs. It all depends on who's winning. What was your category? I was a cool cat to lost, but they got nobody like me. Charles Frederick spun away from two tackles, but then it's brought down to the 23 yard line. All right, but you look good. He looks good. Look good. Look good. Look good. Long side burn. Black hair, black hair. Long side burn. Looking good. He's still Let's see what his offense is doing against the UTD. Back in the second half, 
has looked like one of the best in the country, especially here in the fourth quarter. Last six snaps, minus 11 yards. Kirk ran right into the back of his center, Kyle Ben. Just a couple. Always talk about momentum in college football and how it can change. It's obviously changed the final. Oh my God. Evo. He's lounging now. He's chilling. Seven and a half to go. You're still down three, big fella. Get him up. Yeah, but people get him up. Bebo had the over. Real yeah, happy right but anyway, now. anyway, the momentum. You can tell it's changed. And look how it's affecting the Texas defense and the way they're playing now in this second half. They're playing with a lot more enthusiasm. Look at the sideline. Yeah, that's it. You got it, Coach. Take it. Little boot. Looking for Williams. is covered underneath. Stevens incomplete. All over him is Alad Brooks. So the adjustment the call Reese has made is he's, he's removed the responsibility of the linebackers to have to deal with Jeremy Stevens. He said, forget about it. We're going to turn you loose and put you in other positions to make plays. Go blitz. Take the back. We're going to let the, the safety, the Mod Brooks and Nathan Baxter worry about covering Jeremy Stevens. What's interesting about that is the size of the safety. Both are undersized compared to 6'7", Jeremy Stevens. But with that kind of coverage, they've got to get the ball to number one, Reggie Williams, because he's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside at the bottom of your picture. Third and eight. Here they come. Stevens lost it. talking a lot about how good the Texas is sprinkling in enough of the run to help their offense. you got to remember that that's the Achilles heel for the Washington defense. They, they have struggled this year defending the run. And here in the second half, they've sprinkled in enough to really go after them. In the last seven games, they allowed 20 runs to touch them. On their fifth consecutive offensive trip to the red zone, here is Applewhite. Come back and he's 
Uh, still working the guys, his offensive lineman. And Rick Neuheisel is trying to remind his sophomore quarterback, Cody Pickett, of what's been done successfully. Washington has seen Texas go, to use a basketball term, on a 22 to nothing run to take a four-point lead. Rock Alexander. Jerry Punch, 
guy's common knowledge here on the Texas sidelines that Major Applewhite is just 11 yards away from a career-best passing game at 408 yards, he said, back in 1998 at Oklahoma State. But the concern is this, you know, do, how conservative do you get now? Third and medium, you put it up in the air, or do you let the clock run? Obviously, he's not concerned about a record. He's concerned about winning the football game. His final as a senior here for the long run. Well, two reasons why you don't throw the ball. Number one, it's just bad you have. Number two, the clock is stopped if it's an incomplete. It's 3.59. The clock is what the battle is right now. Texas has got to use that clock as pitch set. There's a third and five throw. Shuffle pass. Safe one to Brett Robbins. Just a yard. A penalty marker is down. What has been a... Uh, Pretty well played game on the Texas side. They've been flagged just twice for nine yards tonight. Let's see who this calls again. Against the Longhorns, it'll be third and even longer. One thing from oh, I'm a sorry, Rickle declined. Yeah. One thing seven. from a coaching standpoint, Mike, is that four point spread. Mm -hmm. at, at one point, means a lot because that means you got to drive the length of the field to score if they only had to drive about 50 yards if it's a field goal with that energy it'd be different that one single point up there is the key thing for texas right now and new Heisman did go for two back at uh, 36 17 i believe it was trying to take it to 21 instead of 19 points job of the punch by brian bradford the end zone. 49 on the kick, 29 on the net. Bradford has been very good at him inside the 20. Put that to his head. Find the ball. Don't watch the man. Find the ball. Go catch it. Well, we welcome you to Husky Time. For those of you that stay up to midnight, 1 a.m., 1.30 a.m., try to catch that Washington game, where you can find it on TV, five times in the fourth quarter, the comeback victory, and 19 in Rick Neuheisel's tenure. And, Lee, that means 19 of Rick's 26, 26 wins. wins. And let me tell you why they do it. Number one, poised by him and the fact that they've got one of the most experienced staff in the country as assistant coaches. The sophomore taken at the helm. They start with a screen for her. Ludus can tackle, but that speed on defense for Texas is a factor there. 315, only two timeouts left for Washington. When we sat down with him, we asked him about the fourth quarter and the way they've been able to perform. He said, you know, when I came in and inherited this team, the one thing I recognized was that they lost some games in the fourth quarter. They had struggled in the fourth quarter, which so we said, Come on in and let's make a commitment to win the fourth quarter. And that was just the first year, and it's kind of carried over since that time. They've developed that reputation. And second down. Underneath, the pass is caught by Reggie Williams with a first down across the 30. So Reggie finally gets on the board here in the last 20 minutes of clock time. He hasn't touched the ball since eight minutes and 10 seconds left in the third quarter. It looks like to me that the key player in this ball game is going to be number one, Reggie Williams, to break the tackle and go 60. Achieve what you emphasize, the quote from Rick Neuheisel, about the focus on the fourth quarter, and they keep drilling it home to the guy. Achieve what you emphasize. It's their focus. Just get it to the fourth quarter with a chance. Did Williams win the war and come down with it? No, out of bounds. Incomplete. He caught the ball, just could not get the foot down. He's close. Yeah, that's the favorite, that's their favorite route at this stage of his career, the fade. Up and over jammer. See as he gets the foot down. Just has his toes on the line. Very good call. By the Mountain West officials. For a true freshman, he has a lot of savvy, a lot of, not just a raw physical specimen, he knows the position, and he's beginning to understand defenses as well. He'll be fun to watch in the Pac-10 for the next few years. For the 50th time tonight, kick it to throw. Underneath Arnold, first time he touched him, Paul Arnold. Gets it to the 47. For completion, it was 16 yards. 2.11 to go. Washington down four. Again, you don't want to say that this team enjoys being in these kind of situations, but you, you, you can recognize that they're in a familiar situation. They know how to respond. They've been here so many times before. And it's up to the Mason's toughest defense to move it on. Stevens, 50, 47.
five. Used the sideline, got out of bounds, and is right at the first down line. Two or one to go. A lot Brooks made the tackle. He's a, a kid who was loved, loved politics. He's so popular they call him the governor down there. Uh, the former governor of Texas, now the president, George W. Bush, said uh, today in his ranch in Crawford, Texas, that his plan for the day included watching the Longhorn game tonight. Uh, president Bush got to know Mac Brown very well, working out in the UT weight room. During the uh, time that he was governor in Austin, and then during the campaign as well. First and ten, take it. Complete. Over hooked out of bounds at the 34. Real close to a first down. You know what's been great about this drive? Go back the last four, the last four throws. He threw the fade route and he just barely missed getting the ball to Reggie Williams. He hit a pass to Paul Arnold. He threw a quick hot pass to Jeremy Stevens. This time he finds hooks. He's finding different receivers. He's spreading it all over the field. He's not locking in on his favorite target, Reggie Williams. Second and one, time to run, Hurst, 20, he's in the jump, he's in the ball, touchdown! Are you kidding me? There's still 149 the 137 yard two touchdown night a 34 yard run what might be his last run in the purple and gold he gets the point is converted by anderson the lead is three and that picture of major applewhite needed no words the determination it's his turn now after washington absolutely nothing in the fourth quarter 80 yard drive hurst takes it to the house For the road, I know, but it's worth it. Oh, yeah, this is great. It's for you guys. It gets no better than the holiday oh, yeah. ball. Huh? Fabulous. Terrific kickoff, too. No return. A credit to John Anderson, who had a horrible first field goal, but has had five touchbacks oh, and a flawless kicking night after that. Okay, I'm going to bring this up one more time, Mike. Dusty Mangum, the Texas field goal kicker, is hit two for two for 50 plus yards. Now, if they can get it in down around the 40, they got a chance. They only have to go 10, 20, 30, 40. They only got to go 50 yards. They can do it. Oh, sure. But it starts with 11. Major Apple White. In and out of the starting lineup for two and a half years after he achieved some great things. And this might be his last drive as a Texas quarterback. Can he get it done? Five in the pattern from the 20. Well, chase the tight end. Well to the 32. Longhorn full complement of timeout. 100 oh, seconds to go. Clock stopped on the first down. And that play earlier in the game, motion the receiver, single to motion the, uh, the back out of the backfield to have an empty set and then underneath the both chase. Brett Robin has catching tailback. Apple White had hit his previous 11. Back to that big watch. Go back to the touchdown and watch the defensive end here just get upfield. And when he does that, he takes himself right out of the play. Jermaine Anderson gets upfield and right underneath 
once he gets to the open field, there's no one there to stop Willie Hurd. And that's the guy in for Kalen Thornton. He's right. been out and injured, and they've run successfully to the left, offensively to the Huskies in this second half. Two and ten, the down and distance. to the 43-yard line. You know, we've been talking about Major Applewhite, Major Applewhite, but let me tell you something. That line, Jockley, Anderson, and Kirk Hughes in the middle has perfect pass protection. Watch, number 77 does a nice job right there, Antoine Kirk Hughes. I like the way the fact that they let those linemen slip, but Kirk, the all student is going to get a nice job of pass protection. Great job of pass protection in this second half, but the throw there by Major Applewhite was thrown before receiver made the cut, and he dropped it right in over his shoulder. 435 passing yards, his career best. And to it was kicked. Stuck at the 37 by Ben Madazi. Texas takes its first timeout at the 1-14 mark. I think it was right about this time last year where I looked at you guys and I said, well, just another holiday ball. And it is just another <laughs> holiday ball. It's amazing how the games stay close. And a part of it is having the Pac-10 and the Big 12, two terrific conferences, sending their second best team here every year. And also the fact that they have enough time to practice to put in some nice special plays, which have worked tonight, Kirk. I was very, very impressed with the ability of both teams to come from behind. It's going to be difficult for either one of the two teams to accept the team. Well, whoever wins this game, you were talking earlier about the Texas fans today. Look at this as a big win. Whoever wins this game, this is a huge win when you have the Pac-10 and the Big 12, two conferences this year who I think were battling it out to say who had the best conference in college football. This is a big game. Whoever comes away with us has a lot to be proud of. Especially when you think of what the Pac-10 has accomplished thus far in the postseason. Zero. Yeah, no wins, a couple of losses. Southern Cal losing on Christmas Day to Las Vegas to Utah in Las Vegas. And then we saw Stanford knocked off by Georgia Tech yesterday. Mangum's ability to kick the long field goal. He has a long of 51, and at this stage right now, they need about another five, yep. six yards, and they're within his range. From here, it's 54 yards. There's a 37. But let me tell you something about long field goals at the end of the ball game. There's so much pressure on him, and it's almost physically impossible for a kid to kick a long field goal when there's so much pressure on him. Like, because you got to get it perfect up fast. With a minute 14 to go, yeah, they're, they're probably thinking, let's win this baby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very effective releases four out there. Apple White looking for the long one, and DJ Johnson gets the foul! He was both again for the, the greatest football player in the history of the University of Texas. I'm telling you, Apple White to me, has been a sensational performer every single time he steps on the field for the University of Texas. This one, Colorado, a couple of years ago when we saw him beat Nebraska yeah. live and in color. Oh. Just, and he stays positive oh. throughout this whole thing. Well, Here's another throw. The, the post corner out. You're going to throw it away from the defender, Massey. And a good job of adjusting to the football by P.J. Johnson and using his body to steal Massey. to not allow him to come over and make a play. The officials have stopped the play here for a second. Uh, 59 seconds. Thank you. If I'm not mistaken, Johnson, Williams, and a couple of these other guys dropped passes that could have won this game last year. Not this year. It. Not this year, though. This year, you notice the, notice the one yeah. year, they were two freshmen. So notice this year, they're making the big play. That's a year's experience. Don't think they didn't think about that coming oh, into this I game. I can imagine. Major Applewhite has completed 13 of his last 14. They'll run down here. Williams to the three. Two timeouts left. 45 seconds. You don't want to give Washington any time on the clock. I was going to say, they're, they're going to try to kill the clock now, so Washington won't have any time left if they score a touchdown. We step out for a second. 43-40. 42 seconds to go. Start the total offense tonight. Most of it coming in the final 45 minutes. Texas Longhorns looking for a bowl win outside of the state of Texas. They don't get a chance to do very often. Their last bowl victory outside of the state of Texas is five tries with the 65 hours bowl. Rick Newhart is a team trying to cut down Max offense on second and goal. Run Williams to 
Houston after two big catches on that drive after the drop in this situation last year. Dusty Mangum Young has the point in. And man, that's good. 90 points. Oh, still 38 seconds to go. You can't, you can't say enough about number 77, Antoine Sergio, 6'3", 210, 6'3", 210, Mike Williams, 6'6", 345. When they needed it, they went off the right side, Kirk, and it's just an easy old ISO play, lead blocker, that big fullback of those big guards, and tackles a touchdown. Man, that's, that's my kind of play right there. 27, fourth quarter point by Texas. Again, if the Longhorns hold on, it will be their greatest deficit of race. And Major Applewhite, if it ends with that snap, Major Applewhite will walk out by improving one of his school career records. Most passing yards in a game, although bowl game records are different, 473 yards passing on 37 of 55 tonight. Our focus will be Washington's offense the rest of the way yeah. to this guy. Congratulations. He is a huge, uh, huge fan of Sony PlayStation 2 college football. Big player. Yeah, all right. He's having a night tonight <laughs> like he's playing that video game. He is. And you know what? There's 8 billion Texas Dan fans. Why did old Mac put him in against Oklahoma? <laughs> if they did, they might be in Pasadena instead of San Diego. Keep it on the ground. yard line with Rock Alexander. Now let's think about the other field goal side and John Anderson who's made a 47 yarder who's made two walk off field goals. It's a four point game though so it has to be the touchdown. Thank you. You can say it next time. Well, how's it going, buddy? I'm sorry, I've lost track of points at 90 pounds. Pull out the graphics. Washington's comeback victory because we got to go review this again. I know. I'm just saying they got a, they got a chance here. They got to see if they have any magic left. Yeah, one timeout. They've moved trips to the near side. about Rick Neuheisel has won 19 of 26 times at Washington coming from behind. That comes from great poise in his point, but also the fact that I think he's got the most experienced staff in the country. He has eight assistant coaches, Mike, with master's degrees. And he has a law degree. Now, let me tell you something. If there's a more educated group of coaches in the country, I don't know. That guy's done a tremendous job. And you know, he's been mentioned for the Notre Dame job. And uh, a lot of people say maybe, no. What do you think, Mike? No. No. Rick no. Chatton no. talks no. with us about it. He is uh, very candid about mm -hmm. the situation and the appreciation of the, the interest. But Rick in Seattle sit right now. And after going to Colorado and getting it turned in the right direction there and having success, uh, to stay in Seattle and keep building on the Holiday Bowl, the Rose Bowl, the Holiday Bowl, First and second in the league yeah. is the right thing to do at this point in his career. Well, he's That's got, he's, 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 in a, he's in a position right now in, in Washington where he has the program heading in the right direction. He's recruiting well. Washington's up and running right now in the past 10. Mm -hmm. He'll be there. Second and five, has to the pickup of five on the scramble. No timeouts left. Incomplete. He was looking for Patrick Reddick and almost had it picked off. Well, if Rick Nukeheisel is a good businessman, he'll do what a lot of these coaches all over the country are doing. They're spreading their name off of a Notre Dame job. And sure. I'm not interested, but I will sign a long-term contract where <laughs> I am. The Indy people contacted him, and I think Barbara Hedges is uh, one of two outstanding athletic directors yeah. in this game. The Los Angeles and Texas also. I think Barbara Hedges, uh, she understands the value of Rick Nukeheisel in Seattle, and that'll be taken care of, would be my... Yeah. Well, he's in that collection of coaches that as soon as the vacancy opens up, boom! Mike Bellotti, Bob Stoops, Rick Neuheisel, they're all candidates for every job. 35, they need 53 yards to pull another one out. Going to go long and take a chance. 
Pitch down the field. For Arnold, incomplete, no flag, and one play left. You're going to take a shot like that. You got to look at Reggie Williams, I think, downfield. Tallest receiver, best hands for the wide receivers. I agree with you. I'll add one thing to it, though. I throw the ball to number 14, Jeremy Stevens, in the middle of the field. Six foot seven, 260 pounds. People can out jump everybody in the middle. Do not call a quick timeout. Do not have an No timeout. Fire. So you got to try and get a first down. Just fire to the ground and then take a shot in the end zone. They don't have to throw a Hail Mary 55 yards here to win the game. I don't get the ball downfield up 15 yards and then fire to the ground. I thought a 14, Jeremy Stevens, if I was there. Here's Washington's last stand. Take it. Because he needed the first down. And Texas will do it. The Longhorns will cap the biggest comeback in school history. Major Applewhite on his best career night statistically. And most satisfying as well. His final night, the birds are in, could not watch. Could only wait to listen. He needs to see you with the towel. <laughs> That's a great shot. Yeah. Mike Schwab, our director, Tom Harker, our producer, our crew, thank you folks. Awesome job tonight. A game with 90 points, five lead changes. 1,038 yards. Our Capital One player of the game. Final game as a long haul. Major Applewhite. Texas has won 11 games for the fifth time in school history. They'll be a top 10 team. And after losing four of the last five bowl games, they get the win here, 47-43. Go ahead, Jerry. What, like a Disney movie, coming back from two injuries as a backup quarterback, bringing your team down for the win on your final drive of the fifth-year senior. What a night.